to today's show. We are going to be doing a online creator YouTube Q&A type of session. So if you're into that type of thing, I hope you're going to want to hang out with us, ask some questions, um, and let's hang out. Have a good time. I saw Nick a little bit earlier this morning doing a stream. Oh, let me mute myself. And I was like, hey, that sounds like fun. We should do that too. Let's do that, right? So that's what we're doing today. By the way, if you like the background music of what's going on and let me know if it's too loud or whatnot, it's all coming from creatormix.com, which is Nick Nimmin and Dean Nimmin's type of company for copyright free music that you can use without any DCMA strikes. And so if you're interested in checking that out, not an affiliated link, it's a free site. Go check it out, creatormix.com. I have a playlist I've even started. I suppose if you wanted that, you could let me know and I could figure out, I think I shared the link publicly and you can even download and listen to my music. So there you go, not my music, but my music mix that I've created. So today is Saturday and I was like, oh, I got some time today. I got some time because it is a very rainy day in Seattle and I was just like, what should we do today? And I figured what we should do is maybe some Q&A. So hello to Tolis out there. Hello, how are you? You're on vacation, right? I think you're on vacation. And uh, I saw you with your coffee and I was like, ooh, that looks fun. That looks fun. And if you're out there, let me know if that background music is too high or uh, too low, all that good stuff, okay? Let me just make sure that this is saving where it's supposed to. Yay! <laughs> Right? Okay. Sometimes it, it saves it, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see how it is. I'll share this one too. Share. You're at the buffet? Oh, yes. Tell me how that looks. I love a buffet. Love a buffet. All right, so I'm going to also pull up the... Oh, gosh. I have a, a form. It's a Google form. So what is that? A form dot... Google, right? Dot Google dot com. I should go look up some of those questions. Thank you. You have fun too. Oh shoot, that's not it. Forms dot Google dot com. Let's try that. Pixel Pia, hello, how are you? All right. Here we go. I'm gonna pull up some of these and we can you won't know if they're new or old, okay? We'll go to these individual questions. If you have a question, let me know. Hello, Tech for Your Needs, how are you? Good to see ya. We're doing a good old Q&A type of thing. So let me know if you have a cue that I can attempt to A. Talking about YouTube <laughs> while my dog chokes. And we're listening to some tunes from uh, Creator Mix. So there's that. All right, let's go look. I want the very last one, not that one. I want, what is your specific question? That's the one I want. Hello, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let's see. Two questions, one with iMovie. We're not gonna do that one. Speaking of thumbnails, what are your thoughts about including pictures of you or other guests in thumbnails? Also your thoughts on hashtags and tags for YouTube videos. So that is gonna be a multi-pronged type of question. So let's go in and tackle this one. Tom Nash, hey, how are you? Great to see ya. How are you doing? How are you? It's wonderful to see you. So I'm, I'm excited that you are here. I hardly ever get to see you online. Um, let, me, let me go back over here. How's life for you, Tom? Lisa, hello, how are you? I'm glad, I know I don't usually stream on a Saturday morning of all things. I usually, let to, um, usually leave that to a Nimmin brother, but I'm like, hey, might as well do it. Might as well do it. The shore is a workhorse for sure. Not only that, we've got this one. <laughs> we've got this one hanging out over here. I got one. Yeah, absolutely. I love them. They're so good, right? Okay. So if you guys have 
questions that you would like for me to attempt to answer, then make sure you drop it in the chat because right now it's a small select group of awesome people who had no idea I was going live. So you get the benefit of having my undivided attention as much as um, an ADD squirrel brain can be having undivided attention. There you go. Mm -hmm. So yes, by the way, the Shore is a workhorse. I love this mic. I've had this for now a few years. And in case anyone is wondering, and you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because I have the microphone and you don't. So you will listen to every word I have to say. Um, I used to run the Shure into the Focusrite Scarlett 2i for that and my guitar for the second interface uh, or for the second input. And I would run it through a, a cloud lifter. But now a days I run this guy into my roadcaster and oh, yeah, the Shure SM58. I think I have maybe got one. Of hey, did my music stop? I'm supposed to be entertaining y'all with my music. Oh no, it's just super low. I didn't want to like blow out your guys' eardrums, but let me know if it's too loud or too little and I will give you more of it. But yeah, now I run the Shure uh, SM7B into the Rodecaster Pro. So there's that. So what are y'all up to on this Saturday morning slash afternoon? Let me know. We were gonna go back to I, opinions and ideas about thumbnails and your photos in them. So let's chat a little bit about this, okay? If you are a brand or business, you may or may not have as much um, inclination to include a whole bunch of people in it unless you have spokespeople. But if you are a content creator that has a channel probably with your face in it, you're probably gonna wanna have your face in your thumbnails. Now there are some exceptions, like if you're a real estate agent, there's a lot of data that would indicate that a lot of the time they wanna see, you know, a house on fire, the housing market crash, the bubble, all sorts of um, grandiose type of things and your face in it is just like clogging up the picture. Or if you're a food channel, a lot of the time people wanna see the finished cupcake, cake, decorated thing, and they're not as interested in your face, sorry to say. So that could be an instance or a genre niche where um, they're not as interested in your face, but most of the other times, um, and there are exceptions to every rule, most of the other times, um, you're probably gonna wanna have your face in it. Now, sometimes they've also shown that statistically, if you have more than one face, there can be more intrigue with the exception petering out somewhere around um, no more than three faces. But, And as much as people want to say they don't like thumbnail faces, unfortunately, data <laughs> tends to show that uh, people prefer thumbnail faces and they click on thumbnail faces. So there's that. Um, you don't use a shore mic anymore? Oh no, what are you using now? What are you using? I'll have to go, yeah, peep your new video for a brand new one. Ooh, 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 RE20, nice, yeah. I do also say um, some mics that I like when I'm not sometimes tied to my desk. I'm really into the Deity mics, if you guys have tried that out. And let me know, I for a while was using the Rode Wireless 2, but I don't know if anyone has also been looking at some of these um, reviews that have been coming out for the DJI wireless microphone, the new two receiver one. They started advertising this thing probably October of last year. And I don't know, with just a million delays or whatnot, it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And you would go on to B&H or anywhere and they'd be like, coming January, then coming April, and then shipping May or something like that. So. I had been salivating after this new DJI mic because it has like better range and it has like the backup recording thing and it has um, at the lower decibel, which is nice. It doesn't peak as often as the Rode. It comes with a charging case instead of having to buy it separately because if you've dealt with a Rode Wireless Go to, wow, we're going on a whole tangent here, but what else would you expect coming to my channel? If you've dealt with the Rode Wireless Go to, and the three different things that it has, then it also has three different charging cables, which is annoying as shit because you're like just struggling with all of these different cables 
And so with this, it has it has its own charging cable and um, they're a little bit um, smaller as well. And I like the idea, they have these like magnetic pieces so you can, you know, stick it onto your shirt or it will also work with the little Insta360 necklaces that have the magnet. So you can stick that sucker right there on your necklace and then be able to use it. And I was like, ooh, that's kind of nice. And if you've dealt with the Rode Wireless Go, you have to use the proprietary software to download the audio files one by one, which is painstakingly just stupid. Um, if they were to fix that, which I think they should, and just let people do it in batches, I think a lot of people would be a lot more satisfied. Now, of course, there are, all, are alternative cases that you can get as well that will charge and go, but it's like a separate $50 case accessory. And so the nice thing about the DJI one is that it exists already <laughs> instead of having to do it separately, right? So um, slightly beefy with the sound, just slightly. Okay. Yeah, if it's someone else's face, you get more clicks. <laughs> and I could also see like if you're a drama channel, you may not want your face on the thumbnail and you may if you know you're talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard or something like that having their face on it which is recognizable and very current right now with what's happening then that could lead to more people clicking than you know just my face so there's that so you have difficulties with thumbnails as you make music videos it's very hard to have the same picture of me playing the piano <laughs> yeah um yeah that could be difficult I mean, there are ways around that, right? But, uh, oh, Keely, hello. You said my friend Dina, Dina, is off the road wireless entirely and finding the Deity and Deity set more reliable. I actually almost bought the Deity. I messaged Andrew um, behind the scenes and I was like, hey, do you guys have plans to have two receivers? <laughs> that was a big thing for me. And he's like, no, not for a while. And that was kind of one of the things, um, because if it was just a single unit one, and I honestly sh probably should have just bought it because the instances where I would need to have two are so rare, but it's just one of those, like you rather have, if you don't have multiples, you have none type of thing. Like what if you only have one receiver and it dies? Or what if you have two and you need to do an interview or, you know, something like that. But I will say for someone who's looking one, I've never been disappointed with any of the um, like DD mics. Second, the Deity wireless mic, it actually comes with a um, lavalier already included in the price as opposed to the Rode one where you have to buy the Rode um, lavalier mic separately. And it has the screw um, like mounting on that lavalier mic into the base connection so that you avoid some of the possibility of that mic just being yanked out. So if you're looking for a single receiver type of thing that can grow with you because they do have other wireless systems, which I believe that you can tap into and use a lot of the same stuff, then the Deity one is a really, really, really good option, solid option to take a look at. So take a look at that. Um, no 5.0 XLR, um, so you can't use the arm with the on-air light. So you can't use the arm with the air. Tell me more. I'm like, what? Now you piqued my interest. I have found that the Rode Procaster, it is something I lusted after for what, a year and a half, something like that. Keely, I almost bought yours, remember? But I was like, oh, shipping from wherever, or Canada or something. So I ended up actually just getting one, um, finally breaking down. I don't know where it was. I finally, oh, remember? I tried to buy the Pixel 6 and I kept getting the spinning wheel of death and blah, blah, blah on the Pixel um, checkout page. And so I took it as a sign that I wasn't meant to spend that money on a phone, but I was meant to spend it. So I spent it on the Roadcaster Pro. That's how that actually came out. <laughs> yes, XLR cables come with the three holes. So I use XLR for this mic, the, this other Shure mic, the MV7, as well as I use the XLR into quarter inch for my acoustic electric guitar. And then I'm also using the Bluetooth connection for um, I'm running the playlist off of my Samsung Galaxy S22, running that through the uh, Rodecaster as an additional input so you guys can have these sweet jams. Let's see. Hopefully you guys are hearing the sweet jams and I'm not just rocking out by myself.
These sweet jams are coming to you courtesy of Creator Mix, not sponsored, but I do love supporting my friends. Checking them out. I think they're, oh, over here. I put a little info graphic up here. It's free background music. No DC me strikes from the Nimmin brothers. So check that out. I do have a playlist that I believe I've made public. And if you don't see it, then um, message me and I will send you the link to it because I think I have it up on Apple Music and Spotify. I think I have it on both. So there's that. All right. What, what do we got over here? Roadcaster Pro. Yeah. Yuva Raj. Hello. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Roadcaster it only takes the three prong XLR. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Thanks, Pixel Pia, for linking the video. What for? Oh, was it the interview for um, with Keely about Discord? That'd be cool. Thank you. You hear me and the music. Awesome. Awesome. Let me know if you want music higher or music lower. It's just running in as a separate audio input right now. So I can't really tell in the mix um, how it's going. If you want more or less, let me know. I like it. I like it. I was thinking of even doing a stream. I know this is the most boring stream already. I'm sorry to anyone who's here uh, of actually doing like a YouTube Q and A type of thing, but having something else to do with my hands so my ADD scroll brain can like process of making um, and drawing in Procreate or creating GIFs, GIFs, however you want to fight about it on my iPad and maybe making some for my Giffy, Jiffy YouTube uh, or channel or whatever else it is. If you guys and gals did not know, I have an account with Giffy Jiffy, however you say it. And it, um, after you create an account, you can create a personal one and it will give you the access so that you can upload your own gifts. And I'm just going to alternate one time. I'll say it one way and the other, I'll say it another way. So hopefully I'll equally opportunity piss everyone off. Okay. And we'll cover all of our bases. And then if you apply after you have, I think it's like at least five gifs uh, you can apply for like a brand or an artist type of an account and once you're approved through that so you usually have to have an email at not a gmail but like at your business one so i have like hello at shelly saves a day or you know shelly at shelly saves a day or whatever it is and you can apply for an artist account and then once you have an artist account your gifts will end up appearing in the gif section of Instagram and in Facebook and some of the places that all integrate with the Giphy slash Jiffy library. So I know that InShot integrates with it. And so you may be using my GIFs currently and not even knowing it. So if you're going to make an Instagram story and you go to the stickers section and you select GIFs and then you say something like new YouTube video, a lot of those are mine that are being used. And how do I know that? Because I have 230 million views on my channel for that. And most of them come from new YouTube video or something like that, or subscribe to my channel. And um, do we get paid for that? No, but it's a secret pleasure that just tickles me to no end. And every once in a while, I'll see some of my friends have posted like new YouTube video. And I'm like, that one's mine. They don't know it, but I'm like, that one's mine. And also if you've ever, um, I have, I have several different categories on there. So if you wanted to see like a taco Tuesday or a Monday fun day or a new post types of things or something about spilling the tea, I've got a whole bunch of them. I got a whole bunch of them on there. <laughs> the stream's not boring. Thank you so much. Bless your heart. I know it is. You're just being kind to me, <laughs> but that's why I rock with y'all that are here. So, um, You said you need some advice, browse features versus evergreen content daily channel here. So I feel trapped in the browse feature friendly content with no longevity. Yeah, it is tough because, oh, do I have my iPad hooked up? No, oh, it's in the other room. Okay. Um, typically I have my iPad and I'm scribbling notes in handwriting that no chicken could even claim as their scratch. So one of, I'm going to turn down this music just a tiny bit. It is a conundrum that a lot of channels have to face, especially if you're news um, or recency relevancy type of based as a channel. So um, 
the news cycle, which doesn't end. So this is very much like Philip DeFranco, right? He is not getting a ton of traction on videos from not only last month, but videos from 2019, because a lot of what he covers is going to be recent events, right? And so most of the time, the recent event that happened in 2018 is usually no longer applicable or interesting to what is happening in 2022 with the exception of, you know, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, or, you know, cause they're coming back from 2016. But for the most part, a lot of the stuff that has happened then doesn't seem to matter now, right? And then if you have an evergreen type of content, and I'm sorry if this is elementary for some people listening, but I wanna make sure we establish the same vernacular and vocabulary as we're going forward here. But if you have something, let's say a, um, a camera tutorial, but it's not specific to any specific camera. And it's talking about the fundamentals of learning about f-stop and ISO and um, figuring out, you know, shutter speed. So the settings that you have on your camera that are best for sports photography, right? Most of the time, there's not going to be some brand new invention in camera that's going to make it so that you're not going to be talking about ISO and shutter speed and, you know, f-stop or aperture in three, five, 10 years from now, right? So if you think about that, you could have, let's say a million views that happen on a video, but if you're a news-based type of recency-based channel, then you really have to get those views like 800,000 at the very beginning, 200,000 that trickle in over time for the rest of whatever because of curiosity or something that happened. Like what happened back five years ago? If you're an evergreen channel, it doesn't matter if it starts at 100,000 and then eventually gets to the million or if it's, you know, equally spaced out. And you see a lot of them, you may actually get a big spike that happens at the very beginning because of new recency. But then as you plateau, you actually see many, many years later or something like that. It just tends to maybe gets picked up in search and it just keeps going up or staying flat and staying steady throughout time. So that is that evergreen type of content. It's not going away. It's like a big old tree and it lasts forever unless you know the forest goes on fire for the most part so the problem with doing recency based ones types of videos is that if you don't continue to turn out content on the daily on the weekly on the monthly when the current events are happening or you're too late on things that happened like if you're recency you could try to make a news video about something that happened two weeks ago but a lot of the time some people aren't going to care about it because there's always something newer in the news cycle also, if you get sick, if you um, if you miss something that happened, if you lost your voice, if you, you know, if some family life event happened to you and you missed that current event, it's really hard to piggyback on the existing videos that are out there about that current event. And so you just miss that one. So you just have to catch the next one. So it can feel like a rat race because you're continually going in and trying to be like, what's hot, what's new, can't take time off. And it's a real grind that can wear you down. Whereas the evergreen one, it's kind of like, okay, that one's out onto the next. But if you do have something that really takes off, then you can kind of be like, how do I ride the wave? How do I build off this? How do I update this with a, um, a new version every year, which is kind of something like primal video does. So if you think about that, you have to wonder how much money do you need to come in and at what pace, right? So if you're someone who, um, Hopefully that makes sense. If you want your entire library and catalog to be evergreen content that is going to constantly sustain and you don't mind the huge like spike, you need the spike right now, then an evergreen content strategy could be a, a way to go. But the recency one, because more people are searching for it, you have more chances of pockets of being popular and kind of like blowing up, right? So you might have someone like, she's not a great example because she's great anyway, but Emily D. Baker, right? She's had explosive growth over the last week because she's been covering the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trials. So they're live streaming the, the trial, but she's bringing her opinion and commentary as a former lawyer for 25 years or whatnot into this commentary. And so the live streams are getting 22,000 people each time she's live streaming. It's nuts. I've never seen it. It's crazy, right? Like who, like what? And sh like, kudos and shout out to her mods and everything like that. But like 22,000 people are tuning into her live stream and she's grown. I think it's like 30,000 subscribers from when the coverage started. She even started a new 
smaller quick bits channel where it's breaking down um, smaller parts of our live stream or like short recap videos and stuff. And it's going well. It already has like 30,000. And I'm like, girl, you surpassed me in like a week. Um, good job. But um, if you think about that, she's not streaming right now because of the fact that um, I think she's on family vacation or something like that. So that explosive growth that she was getting for the first 10 days of the trial that she was covering, it was just like 30,000 people. She's now not getting that because they're going to someplace else. But, you know, Emily's great and she's telling people, go here, go there and watch the coverage because I won't be doing it. But you can tell that if she was in the recent sea mines, uh, you know, and she was staying in it, then she would gain 50 or 60,000. And so it just kind of depends, though, on... The recency thing being on the smaller channel, she's not yet even monetized on it, but she has a, a video over a million views over there. So it'd be great if she'd had a a longevity type of strategy on that one, got monetized, and then had the stuff blow up. Does that make sense? Is this helpful at all? Am I just rambling? Because a lot of the time I just start rambling. <laughs> what is, oh, stop it. We have super chat. Oh wait, I got a so far your response is the best ever. Oh, stop. Stop it. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you though. Okay. Wow. Okay. Two different super chats. Wow. 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 Oh, hello, Diana Wilson. Hello, uh, Mr. Camera Junkie. Oh, hi. hey, Chatty Kathy. Okay. Um, great tips. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Let's pause the music for one second. Do our super chat boogie. By the way, if you guys didn't hear, all this music is coming in from Creator Mix, which is the Nimmin Brothers um, program. There's a little, dang it, every time, man, backwards. I have to remember, you guys have to remember, it's, it's on the side with the sign. Creator Mix, right there. Free music for you. All right, let's do the super chat thing. Let me hit the button. Let's do the super chat thing. Um, protect your eardrums. Here we go, where is it? Man. So much fun, right? I should probably also tell you to do the um, YouTuber things. Subscribe, damn it, every time. Like this video, maybe share it out, maybe leave a comment, I don't know. Do the YouTubey things you're supposed to do. All right, let's go back to the creator mix. Thank you so much for the super chats, everyone. That's super duper kind of you. Back to the creator mix, back to the creator mix. There we go. If you like the creator mix, by the way, it's a playlist of all the music um, that I've curated, I believe, I have a playlist link that I could send you, but it's a public playlist on my profile under Apple Music and it's also on Spotify. Yes, okay. So we were talking longevity. So tell me some of your thoughts that you're having right now. Are you finding yourself a little bit like burnt out on the daily thing? Did I, let me scroll back up. Is that kind of what you were saying? You feel trapped in the brows, yeah with no longevity. Yep. Yep. That's exactly how I would put it. Let me ask you, and you know, if you want to have a conversation, you want to come in, more than happy to toss you a link, you can come on in. Um, the water's fine. And we can chat it out a little bit live. Um, what do you want to talk about? Is it wildly, drastically different in variation? And is there any way that you could turn it into some sort of lesson that is more evergreen? That would be a conversation I would want to have with you because you may be finding that you think you have to talk, let's just exampleize it as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, but really the way that you make that an evergreen type of content is we start having conversations about toxic femininity and um, intimate partner violence and public perception and, you know, or, or the law angle or whatever you want to take on it. So there are lessons that are evergreen, even in something that is more of a quick hit in your face right now, current news event cycle type of event. So hopefully that makes sense. If you want to have a chat about it, I'm certainly happy to, but I would really kind of focus in on what do you really want to talk about? And then let's evaluate, is it really wildly different? Um, or how do you like marry those two together? So you don't feel trapped because that's the last thing you want. You don't want to have, when you're doing 
breaking news cycle stuff as well. A lot of the time, if you want to create, uh, and we're going to come back to tech for your needs with how do you start to create time and space for yourself so you're not having to be burnt out all the time, right? It's really hard with something that is recency based to not be burnt out because like Emily was doing, you know, live streams eight hours a day, as long as court was in session, she was on, you know, so that is going to create a lot of burnout if you're doing that Monday through Friday for six weeks, I think this trial is lasting for, um, that could be tough, you know, or like, is it going to be time to sacrifice vacation time or um, time with your family, right? Or I think she had to end a stream once because she had to, like, I had to do mom stuff, you know, like that stuff happens. Or also if you get sick or if you're traveling, but like, it's really hard to film in advance, which a lot of people, you know, would be like bulk up, upload or um, something like that and schedule out your content. So if you're on vacation, people would never know that you're just not at home doing the YouTube things. Um, but when you're a recency type of based channel and event, it can be difficult to predict <laughs> the future news cycle of what's going to happen. So you could start to feel trapped in that too, because you're constantly scouring the internet for what's new in this space. What can I talk about? How do I put the spin on it? And that like cycle of like, go, 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 get it out now before anyone else does get the scoop. That can be really, really a difficult place to be for your own mental psyche. So, um, all right. Um, you're burnt out and anxious and nailed it. It's a great question. I cover stock. Oh, I know you do, right? Um, financial markets. If Elon is buying Twitter, you cover it, it gets a lot of views. If I do more deep, quality investment education type video with bombs. And I miss the daily news cycle. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you covered the Tesla quarterly earnings call, three hours, tons of views, but man, I was drinking. Yeah, right? And at and what point are you sacrificing, well, your time and energy for the little bit that's coming back in AdSense or something like that? So if you are someone who is finding yourself um, really being hit with volatility in the, not the market, but you know what I mean, uh, the market of views, let's say, of your videos, wow, how about the end? <laughs> Tie that in. Then I would also encourage you to get out of the cycle of chasing the AdSense. So just for an example, like um, I, on a good month, on a really, really, really good month, I make $200 a month from AdSense. And that's not a lie, you guys can go, I've been doing it since December or January. Every month I report out everything that I'm making as an online content creator, I'm not hiding it from you, it's there. Um, it's called the monthly revenue report and I'm just showing you realistically what a YouTuber or content creator is making. So if you're, let's say, getting, again, this is me as an example, I'm making $200 a month in AdSense, but I made last month $2,200 from my Amazon influencer account, not the associate one, the influencer account, right? So I made 10 times more not having to worry about the video views. The video views are whatever it is, whatever I got. And that was just a bonus or the icing on, the, and I always say it's the icing or the dessert, it's not the entree, right? So if you think about that, like I make 10 times more from selling an affiliate product or doing influencer videos or something like that. And if you're chasing the volatility in the market and the views and you're worried about that, I might encourage you also to take a look at your revenue pie to see it where the distribution and slices is coming from because maybe you got a sponsorship with Ameritrade or um, what's the other one with the, um, the stock, uh, you know, the one that's really popular that sometimes people are, you know, do this when you get $10 in free stocks or whatever else it is or something with Bitcoin or something like that, right? If you were to get a sponsorship whoop, with a company like that, that ends up paying you the $2,000 or whatever else it is, um, then you're not at the mercy of the view cycle. And you'll also have the freedom and flexibility to maybe make more of the content that you want to, which makes you more satisfied and happy in the videos that you're putting out, right? So you don't have to chase the things that necessarily get the views. If you wanna do a deep dive into something and make money off of it still, you can team up with sponsors, affiliates, or whatnot. And I might encourage you to look at that anyway I'm not sure how well you do with your sponsors or whatnot, but I might just take a look at that um, division of assets and property in your monthly revenue pie and see if there's something that you could make up 
because it may not be worth it to you for the aggravation that you're causing yourself in loss of interaction with time um, spent with family, friends, chasing the news cycle, blah, 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 and not covering the topics that you want to. So maybe I'll take a look at that. Um, money is great. Channel is running 40K. Oh my God. I don't even know why I'm talking to you. So. <laughs> and it's hard to leave it behind for evergreen. Yep. Yep. It, it is a golden cage. It is a golden cage. So you have to decide how much is it worth to you to stay inside of it or break free. And so, I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's it's a tough decision because if you know anything about my channel, I privated two and a half million views or like 90% 90, 90 of my channel views because I used to do a lot of editing tutorials and I took them all off and um, all of them. And I will eventually like re-upload them onto a site so that I can um, include it as a bonus with my iMovie course. But losing 90% of your channel views overall um, and what that <laughs> did. It was definitely a decision that was tough to make, but it was one that I wanted to make for um, my own sanity, my own reasons and stuff like that. But yeah, it could be hard because I could continue to ride the wave of chasing iMovie tutorials or editing tutorials and um, do that. But I also wasn't that happy continuing to have so much of my channel be focused on that and have that be the only reason why people came to my channel. So to be honest, for me, even though it was a golden cage, um, I didn't want to be in that cage anymore. So I ripped the bandaid off and I said, I'm not doing that anymore. So um, how do you become an Amazon influencer? Yeah, yeah, Patreon content. Yep, where the views are irrelevant. Yep, they sure are, right? Fidelity, Robin Hood, yeah, Robin Hood's the one. That's one. 50-50, um, nice. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I was just jamming out there. I do I do listen to the creator mix one, so. <laughs> but yeah, you're making really good money though, Tom. I forgot, you're, I, you're also in the financial niche, which pays really, really high CPMs. So one thing for me when I was um, doing the iMovie tutorials, I was making, I think it was like a dollar um, as, my, <laughs> as my RPM. And then like when I ended up cutting that off, it ended up, you know, like quadrupling. I think I'm at like $4 now. So it's nothing like you get because you could be up to like $40, $50 like you and Graham Stephan, right? But like, um, yeah, for me, I wasn't, one, I wasn't making any money even on the more views that I was bringing in. So for it, just like, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, you have a $20 CPM? Yeah, I could never, I could never. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get into double digits. <laughs> yeah, financial, man, financial's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just reading the chat here. <laughs> yeah. And if you think about it too, for you, since you are doing Patreon, YouTube is almost like top of funnel for you. You have a lot of free content that's getting people in and for the elevated, you know, graduated stuff. Um, kind of like Renee Ritchie does for the um, Nebula and um, sites where they have a lot of their uncut. Um, that's where the people who are your super fans, um, you know, wanting to get one-on-one -on -one advice or whatever your tiers are that you're offering over there. Sometimes it's easier to focus on those people and giving them more and maybe even having a new graduated tier over there that's even more money or getting more people in to subscribe to those levels, even at the lower ones. And maybe it's better than, you know, the money that you're getting from all the free content while you're chasing your tail over on YouTube. Yay, I'm so glad that that was helpful. I know that I, I should not be giving advice to you. You're making crap tons more you're scrooge mcduck in it over there and i'm just like <laughs> not scrooge mcduck in it i'm huey louie and the other one that's like hey uncle can i have some more all right so hopefully that helps that one a little bit um sorry that particular question we were gonna go back and talk a little bit about creator burnout i believe right is that correct mm, 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 mm. Okay, thank you, Tom, you're so nice. Stop it, stop it. Why are you so kind to me? 
Thank you. I really appreciate you. I really do. Alrighty. Tech for your needs had said, how do you work through burnout? So I know Tom may be facing a little of this right now, right? Feeling like he's got the little handcuffs on about the certain types of content or when he can publish content is going to be out there for you. There are a few different ways that you might be considering yourself burnt out. Are you burnt out on the topic? For me, when I was creating iMovie tutorials, I was burned out on iMovie tutorials because a lot of the time it was, I don't even edit in iMovie um, anymore. I did my first 100 videos in iMovie, then I made the switch over to Final Cut Pro. The reason I started doing iMovie tutorials is because I thought, hey, this is free. A lot of people should be able to do this. And I was sick and tired of people having this excuse of, I don't know how to edit, which is why I can't be on YouTube. So my whole point was to basically make them shut up about not knowing how to do something so that they would ha not have that excuse so they'd actually do the dang thing that they said they want to do, right? It was, I want to be a YouTuber, but I don't know how to edit, right? So I was like, Here, a whole, here's a whole bunch of tutorials on how to edit, right? And it was, I want to be a YouTuber, but I don't know how the algorithm works, or I want to be a YouTuber yet, uh, but, but I don't know anything about cameras and lighting and, and, and all this stuff, right? And I think one thing you have to realize too is, um, the forest will really get in the way of the tree or the, you know, the trees in the forest and now, oh my gosh, you know what I mean? And so a lot of these like whack-a-mole things would pop up and you're like, well, I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to do it on my phone or I don't know how to do it on this. And I would be like constantly like trying to <laughs> smack down um, their excuses of why they couldn't do something. Right. And then I became stuck in my own um, cage of, well, now you've had success in iMovie tutorials, but I was never setting out necessarily to, only teach people about iMovie tutorials. It was about how to share what you love with the world, right? And then it later graduated into how to share what you love with the world and not be broke, right? How to make some money while you're doing it. Because a lot of people then will be like, I'm making these videos and nothing's working. Okay, well, let's help you make some money. But I never had set out to be like the best iMovie tutorial channel out there in the world. And so for me personally, after I stopped using iMovie and the questions keep rolling in about how do I do blank in iMovie, I would have to go back and be like, well, let me open up iMovie. What is the thing you're trying to achieve? Let me try and reconstruct it and then deconstruct it um, from a Final Cut way to an iMovie way or a creative overlay way or what can I do to help you make this effect? Not that people were very thankful about it, but you know what I'm saying? So I would have to go backwards and be like, let me figure out how to do this in iMovie so I can answer this question. But in the end, I don't think it was helping as many people as I wanted to reach because the point was not that adding a fancy transition was going to make your video any better, right? You still have the problem of you're boring on camera. You're not a good storyteller. You didn't have a good hook. You rambled on too long in your intro. You never closed them down and told them to watch another video. You didn't have a call to action that actually added people to your email list. You weren't actually going to make any money because whatever, yada, yada, yada. And so I was like, I'm becoming stuck in this content creation trap and I'm burnt out on this because there's only so many tutorials about iMovie, first of all, that I can make. And then, I was just like, I want to break free from it. But anytime I would try and make a tutorial on anything else, my views would tank anyway. And then after a while, I was like, well, if my, my videos and views are going to tank, I might as well do it on topics that I want to talk about because then I don't use iMovie anymore. I don't want to make videos on that anymore. So it became um, really disheartening to have to keep making videos on something that I was no longer passionate about, didn't care that much about, and didn't address the problem or the root issue of what I was trying to help fix on YouTube or what I was trying to share with others. So you really have to maybe take stock and in inventory. Is it the content that's burning you out? Is it the schedule that's burning you out? Is it, um, you know, the repetitive questions? Is there comment filters that you can add? <laughs> because for me, there's a lot, but you all know that. Um, but also it became like, what's the plan? What's the difference? What, what is going to make me happy? And I thought, okay, maybe I'm more advanced and I um, get people through Final Cut Pro. That's the natural progression. And you know what? I still wasn't happy because it still didn't address the problem that I had, which was after you make a video, what the heck do you do with it? And how do you use it to promote yourself or push yourself to make more money, grow a brand or increase your influence, right? So 
again, not addressing the root cause of why I wanted to be on YouTube in the first place. So one thing that you have to do is you have to get like out of your environment, get out of the room. And sometimes it can be like, <laughs> for me, I probably had a bit of a depression because like I was working from home, I was YouTubing from home. I like, I never left my house, you know, when we were in the middle of the Panini and, um, you know, my husband was the one doing the grocery shopping. Like there was a good year. I didn't leave the house. And so um, sometimes you really need a change of environment, right? And sometimes you need to be able to be like, hey, I need to make a video just for me. Now, whether it's unlisted and you just give it to a few friends or a Patreon perk, or you have a separate place where you can kind of like let it out. Um, you have a talk with a fellow creator friend. You um, decide to make a video and not publish it and not have it be for like public consumption and like tear down or you do and you put it out for public consumption and be like this is something that i want to make right now the sarah dt rule right like some for you some for me some for you now one for me and um so maybe that will help you feel better or maybe it's just time to take a break turn off the digital because i found that sometimes the deeper into that i am the more i want to comment back on things and situations that i have no part of I have no skin in the game in that, but I get invested into like arguing with some nincompoop online <laughs> because I feel like I want to be seen and heard and be correct. And so sometimes you got to get away from keyboard, <laughs> get away from the keyboard, go outside, hang out with your puppies, spend some time in the real world. Like, um, I remember there was this one trip that we went on and I had like a coffee, like Instagram story as you do, which expires in 24 hours. Right. And I spent all of this time trying to make this beautiful little cafe Instagram story of my coffee cup that by the time I drank the coffee, it was freaking cold, right? And I'm like, there's something wrong with this world where I'm just like, I'm so concerned about something that expires in 24 hours versus the permanence that is being in this moment right now. So there are certain times where you catch yourself and be like, I have got to stop, like get out, get out of it. You know, I could have posted a coffee cup from six months ago and no one would have known the difference. You know what I mean? So if you take stock in some of the things that you actually care about, maybe the coffee cup isn't one of them. And so you don't really need to care that much that here's my coffee cup. <laughs> mm. Why did it do that? Is my green screen on accidentally? I don't know. It's possible. All right. Um, I made these videos to sh to make people shut up. Yeah, yeah. Shirtable right there, right? <laughs> yeah, and after five years on YouTube, it is easy to get burnt out. Yeah, and I think um, my close family and friends and crew here know that um, I contemplating giving up YouTube, well, one, all the time, but like fairly seriously, even like just a couple weeks ago, you know, I think I was telling uh, my Thursday nighters, is my green screen on? Oh, my bad. I didn't even think, oh, it is. I wonder how many months that's been like that. Dang it. Okay, wait. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, I suck. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I mean, you did now, but um, I mean, it was a couple weeks ago where I was just like, oh, fuck it. I don't want to do this anymore. It's just not worth it. Cause y'all know, like I, I privated all those videos. And now I put out a video and 50 views, 35 views. I do the Thursday podcast with D Dane and Gwen as a, just a rebroadcast, um, you know, a, a multi-streaming one. That gets more video views than just me on a Thursday night. And I'm like, I am so unmotivated by the views to even make video on demand that I'm just like, fuck man, it's been five years on YouTube and I make a video and it's like, 50 views like what the actual f happened to my life here should i just give up or should i just make a new channel and just <laughs> you know like um and um it really it bummed me hard man like i'm still bummed and i'm still like crawling and out of the you guys remember like um what was it, 2018, 2019, I did the giveaway. I gained like 20,000 subscribers. And then for the next two years, 30,000 subscribers. And for the next two years, every time I put out a video every week on the clock, lost 100 subscribers or more for two years straight, which is just a mind fuck if you really think about that. Every time you put out a video, your subscriber number goes down. 
and then you're like, okay, let me take the video topic that is 90% of my channel views and also ax that. And then once the people who realize the only videos you're putting out right now have nothing to do with green screen, iMovie, editing, stuff like that, I still have. <laughs> so you guys remember when I was celebrating 40,000 subscribers, right? Do I have 40,000 subscribers now? No. Have I lost 200 since I just started privating iMovie tutorials? Yes. That's actually been more than that. I've lost... <laughs> but I'm so used to it now that it's kind of like, um, I, I feel like I have no fucks left to give. I, and so, yeah, sometimes I want to set the whole thing on fire and just walk away and be like, fuck it all. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> there's that. Um, and, and that's why I, I tell y'all too, that like, it's not all sunshine and rainbows on this channel. And I know a lot of like YouTube gurus are out there being like, anyone can do it and you just have to have faith and perseverance and keep posting once a week and I'm like fuck that I've been at it for five years and <clears throat> I am the poster child of just about everything wrong you can do with your channel I have done so that's why like I'm coming from this place of experience like I have failed more times than most people have tried but like I will tell you straight out <laughs> like that's why I changed my YouTube banner and it's like, I'm not going to lie to you. If your videos suck, I'll just tell you that they suck, but I'll do it with love. And I'll tell you that because I want you to actually genuinely be better versus some of the other, I'm just going to say it, <clears throat> some of the other people out there, they want to tell you and make you believe that you can do anything so that you'll buy their next course. And that's fine. That's how they make their money. They need people to believe that they can do it. And I'm all for that, but I'm also a realistic type of person where I'm not trying to break your heart and be an asshole about it. I'm trying to break your heart and either make you want to be better about it or change your direction. Because if you have no camera presence and you, um, you hate the camera and you don't want to make videos like that, then I'm going to say, be a podcaster, be a blogger. You know, you don't have to necessarily be a YouTuber. And I just feel like there aren't a lot of other people that are going to just straight tell you to your face that. <laughs> so there's that. So I'm not for everyone. In fact, I'm probably not for the majority, but the few of you that rock with me, you know, I rock with you. So you gave up in 2014 and you realized you missed it and came back. Yeah. And sometimes, right, that creator burnout, when you decide to take a step back and you have some time to rest and recover, you really are like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's fucking do this thing. Let's do it. Um, the message is the most important, right? <laughs> um, I, you've considered giving. I don't think there's a single YouTube creator out there who hasn't thought about giving up at least once. And if that's you, you're fucking lying. <laughs> what kind of videos do I make now? <sighs> Not very good ones, apparently. Um, now I make videos about um, how to YouTube better <laughs> because it's more of a um, do as I say, not as I do because I've made all the mistakes. So you don't have to. So anytime you pivot, you will lose some initially and then it will grow back. True that. Yep. Um, even I can't post once a week. Yeah. It can be difficult sometimes. You like honesty. Yay. <laughs> By the way, honestly, if you like these tunes, wait, where's the overlay? Why didn't you guys tell me? Oh, because it's in the green screen folder. <gasps> okay. Okay. It was, okay. So the Stream Deck button is connected to the wrong. So when I did the like, subscribe, whatever one, it was coming from the scene collection of the green screen one. Oh, I'm such a dunderhead. Wait. Okay, wait. Here it is. Here we go. Here. Creator mix. Go get yourself some free music for streaming in the background. There you go. <laughs> God. Oh, wait. No, let me see. See, right? Yeah, no green screen on this because I was in the green screen. That means I have to go back into the green screen folder and put it back. <laughs> what's my new slogan? Wait, what's my new slogan? <laughs> oh, I should write it down. I made all the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> So Sanal says, I don't think we have uh, the big numbers. You don't have to have the big numbers to be successful. That's the real myth. We have a message and audience and who cares? <laughs> Match up like you mentioned. 
You're loving the creator mix. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Another one right there. Sinal. Um, by the way, I saw that you had left some comments on some of the other videos, like the monthly revenue report. And I have been shit at returning um, the favor at commenting back, but know that I see them. I will respond to all of them. Okay. And um, I appreciate you for leaving all of these thoughtful comments on all these videos. I really appreciate that. I will respond in kind. Um, yeah, there you go. I, I see you. I see you. Okay. Now, um, oh yeah, I have an entire video that I will be making again is how I failed my way to 40,000. You know, I, you can fail faster, fail faster and forward um, with my advice. And we'll talk about all those things, which I have talked about before in a, it was a new year's uh, resolutions stream where I talked about tons of mistakes that I've made on YouTube, including things like giveaways, including things like the um, trying to do advertisements in the very beginning, including things like, uh, you know, just a million things and buying courses from the wrong people, <laughs> working for the wrong people. So yeah, a lot of that, I get a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't know about because of either where I've worked or who I've worked with or events and things that I've attended with people. There's lots of stories and I won't necessarily name and shame all of them, but I can talk about them in generalities and you probably be able to know who I'm talking about anyway. But um, there you go. Um, yeah, someone said that I should do a debunking YouTube gurus. And I was like, it's a little mean spirited because you know, people just have their different ways and I kind of have likened it to you want to get in shape? You got the boot camp guy. You got you know the the flamboyantly, openly you go girl type of um, who is that uh, cyclist guy, fitness by Marshall guy. You've got the um, the yoga, calm, zen, everything is peaceful person, and then you got the hellraiser that's going to set it all on fire. So <laughs> you just gotta you know you find your tribe and you roll with them. And I think the problem that I have a lot of the time is the people who want to listen to six people at the same time, and then they want to like have this conversation about. Well, Fitness Marshall J said that I shouldn't do trending topics. And then this person over here said that Fitness Marshall J is not saying this as a YouTube advice guru, just name popped up. And this person said that I should only do evergreen type of content. So which one's right? And I'm like, I don't know, fuck face. Why don't you go do some of your own data and research and give it a shot? Maybe it depends on your niche. You know what I mean? There's that. This is why I can't work with the public. This is why I can't work with a lot of people is because my mouth gets me in trouble. And in fact, my employee evaluations almost all the time would say, your messaging isn't incorrect. The information is correct. You just make people angry <laughs> when you deliver said information or, you know, like there could be a little less making people cry at work. And I'm like, but was I wrong? So there's a lot of people that <laughs> don't want to cry while they're at work. So there's that. <laughs> you know, it used to, I used to joke. I used to be a real ball buster guys and gals. I would be like, it's not a day at work until someone cries. And then sometimes people would like, literally cry at work. Some people just can't hold their fucks in. And I had plenty to give back then. Um, yeah. Yep. 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 I did that giveaway and that's what I said. Um, I did technically two giveaways because it was going so well. The giveaway wasn't even over. We decided to throw in another one during that time. And I'm not even like mad about it. I'm not even, um, I was mad at some of the giveaway winners where there's such assholes about, did you send it yet? Where is it? Not a thank you when you do send it. Because a lot of the time, you know, they don't realize like it cost me a hundred dollars to ship this to you. How about a Thank you. <laughs> um, and no, nothing like that, let alone like it cost me $250 for all these prizes um, that I gave you and $100 for shipping. <laughs> so and then to have them be little snots about it, like oh, and you never see them again, never see them again. Ever. And then um, does not play well with others. Yeah. Or does not coach well with others, does not coach well with most. Um, is probably, I have a lot of t-shirts. <laughs> I have a lot of t-shirts I should make, right? <laughs> Does not play well with others. So that's a good one. <laughs> See, that's the thing though. You don't, 
want to shit on all of your niche neighbors too much because one, a lot of them, most of them, well, almost every single one of them has a bigger audience than I do. Some with very rabid fan bases, some with not. And um, the last thing I need is some 12 year old tweeny bop coming over here and telling me to go kill myself because I happen to mention something about how I don't like that their YouTube -y person uh, does something. And you know, I'm like, it's just a different flavor. And I don't, it's not something I would advise my clients to do. It's not something that um, I think is a good idea, but you know, some people like kale and um, some people will die from it. I don't know that's the extreme, right? <laughs> it's just different strokes, different folks, right? And at the end of the day, it's not my fight. And either people will stick with someone and love them and learn from them and grow, or they'll find out on their own that that person's a piece of shit or full of shit, one of the two. Or if they don't, you know, that's, that's fine too. Or they'll think I'm a piece of shit and full of shit. And um, plenty of people think that too. So. <laughs> Uh, oh, you look, you like the spice, the Shelly spice, spicy Shelly. Um, roasting other gurus would be kind of fun, but you know, also then I don't want to go to like some conference where I'm speaking and then have them be like, Hey, saw that video. And I'm like, Oh, which one? And they're like the one where you hate me. I'm like, no, it was just being spicy. And they're like, we don't like it. <laughs> you get just completely like shut out from events. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for that kind of heat y'all. <laughs> but there are plenty out there that are really bad at what they do and they make millions of dollars and it is sickening and there are people out there. Okay. We'll just go on this rant for a second that literally go crawl into other people's Facebook groups, ask questions, gather the responses from other people who volunteer them up, then go make videos about them on their channel, offering this advice as if it comes from them and their experience. And I'm like, child, you are 12. You have not been on YouTube 12 years. You are literally 12 and you're coming out here with advice that's not yours. Are you gonna tell them next that you fought in Vietnam? Cause I can tell you for a fact, you being 12, that's not true. I digress. <clears throat> I digress. But that's like, when you see that type of stuff, I'm not necessarily gonna call it out apparently by name, um, but I don't wanna collab with them and I don't wanna work with them and I don't have respect for them. Not that it matters though. They're certainly not, while they dry their tears with their $100 bills, they're certainly not thinking about me, not thinking about them. So there's that. It's one of those, I'm angry about it, but they're not, they don't give shit because they don't know that I'm talking about them. Um, Get a t-shirt, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the main reasons why I've avoided giveaways like the plague. Yeah, that was not the type of community I wanted to foster. Yeah, 100%. Now, any type of giveaways that I do, one, I make sure they're like maybe a digital thing. Like you want free access to my um, to my course. It's not something that necessarily cost me extra, right? But um, also I don't have to deal with international shipping, something like that. Also, it's not something that I would want to necessarily give away um, in the title because there are people out there who will just search for the word giveaway. And on top of that, there are channels who will rip down the videos of any video that has giveaway, and then they will upload it on their own video, get lots of views on it, and then put a link to the giveaway, like if it's a Gleam site or something like that. And what's messed up, well, there's plenty of things messed up about that, but um, it's actually how I've made a couple of YouTube friends is because I would find out my video is on someone else's channel. And then I would look and their entire channel is YouTube giveaways from other people. So I, I know they're just aggregating all of these videos. And for me, usually when something like that is happening, you know, it's like some people would be like, oh, I got my thing taken care of, no big deal. I am the type of person who, like if I can see who some of these other creators are, I'll, I'll try to find them on Twitter or um, an email or something. And I'll be like, hey, just want you to know that your video is showing up on this site. Um, I don't know if you've given them permission or not, but my video is stolen. I've filed a copyright takedown. You know, you can do with this as you will, but I just want to make sure that you're aware. And so several people on Twitter, that's how we even became mutual follows was because um, 
I would let them know that their video was appearing on other places. They were like, you know, like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. You know, what, what should we do? Or, um, you know, that type of thing. But I will try to find the other people and tell them, you know, but now if I were to do a giveaway, I would do it in the middle of a video towards the end also so that, um, hopefully the people who are still watching towards the end, who are more true fans, um, they would be rewarded with a surprise giveaway versus the people seeking it out. And usually when I do giveaways now with a brand or something like that, I will work with them so that if it's like a digital code so that you can get service for a year, or if it's like some sort of product, I did one with a company where they got sent out like a hair dryer or something like that. Um, it was more like, you collect the information, you give it to the brand, the brand will send them out a package so you don't have to pay for packaging and shipping and stuff like that too. So there are different ways to do it, to be more stealthy and to also reward people, right? Or you could do it something like um, giveaway only for people who are um, Patreon people, right? And you put the video and the code or the, the link in your Patreon thing. So it's really only a select group of people. I was telling someone, uh, a friend recently, they're like, oh my gosh, I have all this gear. I don't know what to do with it. And I was like, you should have an online digital yard sale. And first access to it should be your Patreon or your um, channel subscribers and members where they have access to like the listings and stuff in the website, like two hours or a day before anyone else. And then you open it up to anyone else and you can, you know, figure out the rest. Um, and they like that idea or, you know, there are different ways to kind of reward the people that are more loyal. Or if you want to do something like, um, I saw a giveaway where it was only people who'd been subscribed for more than a week. And then it was like three days before the giveaway was going to happen. Then they posted the video saying the giveaway was happening. You had to be present. It was a live stream. It was a celebratory thing, but because in the chat thing, only people who could chat were people who'd been subscribed for seven days. Um, you couldn't just have all these people flocking to it to try and comment and try and um, put a message on the screen because they weren't allowed to physically chat because they'd only been subscribed for three days. So hopefully that makes sense in a few different ways that you could go about not tricking, but like rewarding the true people versus the giveaway crawlers. And you can also go in and see, like you can see it in my social blade. I think I posted it once in my Instagram stories. It's in my archives, but like, you can see it where like you see this huge influx of subscribers and then you see like every week, like minus 300, minus 400, minus 200, <laughs> because every time you post a video and then they're like, who's this channel that's popping up? Because I don't remember subscribing to them. Like, oh yeah, they had a giveaway. Oh, who won? Oh, I didn't win. Unsubscribe. So it's that cycle. It's that cycle. <laughs> so, all right, what do we got over here? Let's see. You might want to collab with them. Someday. Yeah, exactly. Right. And there are some people I would collab with. Um, so the X nay on the kale, please. <laughs> we all need more kale, more kale. You know, it's funny is um, the collaboration is going to be the point of next Thursday's chat. Uh, we're going to be talking about collaboration with other people. So I don't do giveaways, brand deals or collaborations. I guess I don't play well with others. You play well with me, right? Which is why we're we're buddies now. So um, I'm fine with collaborations as long as it fits well on both channels. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You've had bad experiences working on collaboration projects and others don't have my work ethic and flaked. I did all the work. Yeah, that's tough. It says, I love collaborations as long as it's the right audience. It's how I built my first channel and it works better in some niches than others. Yeah, that's, that's all true. And we're going to go into a whole hour's long worth chat about collaboration. So we don't want to give away too much here, but it's best when you have a lot of ground rules up front about who's going to do the work, where it's going to live, um, you know, what day it's going to be published deliverables ahead of time. So everyone is on the same page and then, um, expectations as far as participation, promotion, that kind of stuff, because at the end of the day, it could be for fun. It could also be a business transaction. You would never do a collaboration with someone that I haven't already been in contact with. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You wanna do it with people that you know, like, or trust, right? So every once in a while when you get some rando, that's like, um, or or the shout out thing, right? Shout me out, why? Because it'll help grow my channel. Why do I care? Why would that, why would that be your best opening line? <laughs> like, why would that matter to me? 
that makes no sense. Like the the entitlement that comes from someone being like, shout me out. Why? Like, I don't mind doing a shout out to, you know, someone like um, Mr. Camera Junkie. We've been friends now for years. You may not think we're friends. I think we're friends. I think we're friends. Okay, don't disappoint me here. And I'll be like, I've met you in person. I've met your son. I, you know, I know that you're a solid person. I know that you have a lot of knowledge and things and cameras and setup and live streaming. And that's someone that I could recommend if someone's like, who should I be talking to about this Sony setup? I'd be like, oh, Louise, you know, whatever. And that's a different type of it's an actual endorsement almost. So if you think about a, a channel shout out or anything like that, it's really an endorsement of someone, right? And if you don't know anyone, then the last thing you wanna do is put your stamp of approval on them, right? It's like, anyways. And it's the equivalent of being able to like go up to a piggy bank and then ask for withdrawals when they're like, I'm sorry, sir, you don't bank here. <laughs> You've never put in any deposits. Um, there's, we don't have a growing relationship over time. Like I literally don't know you from the person who walked over here um, or the person who like went to the bagel shop. Like <laughs> you mean nothing to me, you know what I mean? So. A lot of the time you can't, you know, pour from the empty bucket. You can't make a huge withdrawal, which is an endorsement from someone or a channel without ever first making some deposits. And that could be leaving a comment, um, you know, that could be liking their Instagram post. that could be sending them a DM when you graduate into that, or it could be, um, you know, mentioning them in a description box. It could be retweeting them as like, this new video came out, like those types of things like people see, and those are all tiny micro deposits over time. And then the next time you approach someone and say, hey, I really saw this video, it resonated with me. And you're like, oh, I've been seeing you, you've been commenting, you've been retweeting, you've been liking my stuff. I know you've been rocking with me for a while. I'm much more receptive to someone than being like, do you have time to answer a question about X, right? Versus the first person who shows up in my DMs and says, here's my friend's YouTube channel, promote it on your YouTube channel in your next video. And I'm like, listen, fucker, like one, I don't even know you Two, the audacity <laughs> that you just come in here and like demand it. You didn't ask, you didn't say why I should. I don't even know this channel. It could be like heavy metal death band, like whatever. And I would be like, wh how does not compute? Why would I, why would I, and why would I be demanded to and ordered to? What kind of recommendation is that gonna be? <laughs> It's not, <laughs> it's not. So people would, uh, let's see, see, yeah, facts. Hey, brother Bruce, hey, how you doing? Did you get your laundry done yet? I given you an additional 12 hours. Have you finished your laundry? Almost every single time, y'all, if you see brother Bruce in the chat, ask him how his laundry is going. Just have it be a thing from now on. Every once in a while, he'll surprise us with my laundry is done. And then we'll be like, we'll move on to, is it folded? Is it, is it back hanging up? Just every time he comes here, just barrage him with, how's that laundry going? Speaking of, my laundry is sitting in the dryer. I need to pull it out and actually hang it back up and like fold it and stuff, but it is done. Well, one load is. Yeah, I am gonna put you on blast. I'm gonna put you on the tumble cycle, buddy. How's your laundry? How's your laundry situation today? You know, nothing but love for you though. <laughs> you know, we do it with love. Razzing with love. Do you have dryer sheets? <laughs> I have dryer sheets. <laughs> Too high of an expectation. <laughs> I did throw a laundry sheet in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, though, I do need to do another load of laundry today because um, I just have different colored sweatpants for each day of the week. <laughs> Y'all. I don't know if uh, it's like sweatpants and leggings, like, cause I am work from home. And so like I, when I have to put on real pants, they're still like jeggings, but like, do I want to wear real pants? No, I do not. Not even in the slightest. <laughs> Brother Bruce, it's great to see you. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. You know that even if I razz you, we still love you. They're washed, keeping them in the dryer is just proper storage, exactly. Precisely, precisely. Questions about YouTube, y'all. Questions about YouTube. <laughs> you don't have to apologize for that. They're well-versed in the fact that my ADD squirrel brain is usually needing no prompts to go off topic. Oh, I'm not saying that it's organized enough to have like a specific color 
for each day. I'm just saying I have enough sweatpants so I can wear a different pair each day. So today, wait, I don't know if you can see it. Oatmeal. <laughs> Oatmeal. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that was awkward. I didn't quite get my leg all the way up there. <laughs> Is that not the true YouTuber type of um, dress code though? Like it's sweatpants on the bottom and maybe depending, well, obviously not me because I'm a hot mess, but um, you know, usually it's like bodysuit or something nice on the top, you know, actual professional shirt, except for me in this t-shirt or in this tank top and then like sweatpants on the bottom. Tis would, oh shoot, my guitar is still sitting here from last night's stream. <laughs> Why do you guys tell me that? Why do you tell me that at all? <laughs> Diana, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And um, yeah, <laughs> no worries, no worries at all. If I run out of clothes, I'll just go to somebody's spread shop and buy more. <laughs> you know, based on all the new slogans and shirts that I need to um, create, you could have enough shirts for all week. I think I do have some shirts though. Um, don't, don't go buy them. I think they're really old designs and I think are there shirts? I think it's I think it's like the I, I like you a latte ones. I think they've been there for like three years. I haven't updated them. I really should actually do that. Maybe I should do that. It's just a million and one projects. And again, because I price them at like um, the lowest pretty much that they can be, I think it, it won't let you do less than like a dollar's profit. So I, I price them at the dollar profit, which is no profit. And um, I can't even run sales on them because there's, they're like, you can't apply a coupon code because it's less than the dollar profit or whatever it is. But um, yeah, I, I think it would be bad of me to try and sink any energy into all of these things that don't make me money. So there's that. You need to work on some designs for yours. Yeah. You know, I will give some love out to um, Press and Sew. So Press and Sew is a company, where are they located? Doesn't matter, they're, they're in the US. <clears throat> it's a husband and wife, very, very nice um, folks. And they do a bunch of the shirts for a lot of the people in the Ecamm community. So I think Ian Anderson Gray, Diana Gladney, um, I know Doc Rock is there, Ecamm um, does theirs through there and Florida. Thank you. Thank you. I knew you would know. Um, so Sylvia Nixon and her husband, I think that's correct. Um, they're super nice folks. So if you are also looking for an alternative shop to create your merch in, you may want to check them out. They seem really very, very sweet. I think one of these days I should probably contact them to do some shirts and stuff, right? But um, I have a few pieces from there, including Ecamm. I've gotten one from someone else too. And um, their stuff's good. Their stuff is good. The Nixons, right? Yep, press and sew. So if you're looking for another press and sew is uh, an endorsement, a recommendation, or whatever, hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. Okay. Oh, by the way, speaking of things that are off topic, Literally, yesterday was International Dance Day. So I went and posted a short of the dance team-ish that I'm on, um, the, the country line dancing one. And so we posted a video and I figured even though that's off topic, has absolutely nothing to do with my channel. And typically I would put it on the Shelly saves, nope, Shelly shares her day type of channel. I was like, you know what, yesterday, International Dance Day. Let me just put that out there. So if you want to see some line dancing to a local artist called Dakota Porman in conjunction with Gentry Jones, which is a duo um, doing a countryfied version of Roll It, Roll It. That's a good one. Check that out. Maybe it's a shout out. <laughs> well, you know, what? it was an endorsement, right? Technically, because I was like, yeah, check them out. They're good stuff, right? By the way. I knew that today I might be a little spicy. So I was like, mm, the hoops, when the hoops come out to play, you know, that Shelly is here to slay. I don't know. I don't know when the hoops are here. I'm not very, um, as nice as usual, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's still raining out there on Saturday. I don't know who I'm kidding. I wasn't going to leave and do anything anyway, but, um, Anyways, 
So I'm glad that you're here hanging out with me. All four of you that are left. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. Yeah, keep keep an ear out. Uh, keep an eye out for the hoops. If the hoops are out, gloves are off. Right? If the there you go. There's another shirt right there. If the hoops are on, wait, if the hoops are out, the gloves are off. There you go. Hoops out, gloves off. Okay, so I was gonna come back. Other questions about YouTube -y stuff. In order to make my channel more unique and personal, I'm thinking of changing my YouTube name to my name but I feel like I would have to change all of my other socials as well. Am I overthinking this or not? It depends, which is my favorite answer on YouTube. Um, I would say that there are times when having your YouTube channel be your name can be a bad thing, okay? If let's say Kim Kardashian and then launching a makeup company called Kim Kardashian West, KKW, right? Or KKW Cosmetics, KKW Fragrances. Um, if you all didn't know, Kim Kardashian is divorcing the West part of her name and is going back to Kim Kardashian or technically already is um, and has dropped the West which is going to cost her millions upon millions to change her branding, to change um, packaging, to change a lot of things, right? So where I'm going with that is you could find yourself later in a situation where because of marriage or divorce or something else, your name um, is going to change. So if you happen to be a female or, or I guess technically anyone who's getting married and is considering changing their name. Are you going to go by your maiden name or uh, married name or you continue to go by a different name? So Jacqueline Hill was married to a gentleman called John Hill. Then they got divorced. She kept Jacqueline Hill because she was known on YouTube as Jacqueline Hill. She started a cosmetics brand and it was Jacqueline Cosmetics, I think, obviously. And then she started a jewelry company, I think it's Jacqueline Roxanne. But I think her YouTube channel is still Jacqueline Hill, right? And she recently got engaged. So she's gonna be Jacqueline something or other, actually. So I don't know if at that time, she's then going to change her YouTube channel name into Jacqueline slash new last name. Um, or not. So that's just a consideration that one may need to deal with when you use your name as your YouTube channel. An additional layer that you may need to think about is if you use your name as your YouTube channel, personal safety. Um, you may or may not like the, the fact that everyone now has access to probably not only the city that you live in, but your, maybe if it's your full legal name, how easy is it to possibly be doxxed or have information shared about you that you don't want out there and shared, right? Um, also, if you use your name, which for some people, you know, a lot of the time they're like, well, my name doesn't change, so it can be about anything. Uh, one of the problems with having a channel name like Sony Alpha Rumors YouTube channel is what if one day you start talking about Fuji cameras or, um, Panasonic cameras and they'll be like, but it's Sony Alpha Rumors. Why? Why would we, you know what I'm saying? So that could be a problem if then your content starts to contradict what your channel name is. And are you gonna change your channel name? Are you going to um, expand? Like how, how is that gonna work exactly? So there are considerations to take into place, but if it's something like barbecue grilling girl. As long as you're talking about barbecuing then, um, and that's all you wanna talk about and you never wanna talk about anything else, that might work out well for you. And it can be very uh, descriptive enough that people who see your 
channel name in a comment are gonna be like, oh, outdoor grilling girl. Great, I check this, I like outdoor grilling. Um, and you know, that could lead people to wanna follow you versus just first name, last name. She says while having a channel name, Shelly saves the day. One of the reasons though I chose that is cause it didn't have to be tied to any one specifically like thing. I can save your day in lots of ways <laughs> with some sass, with some um, extra spice, with some like editing advice, with whatever. But it also makes it harder for some people to be like, I don't know what the hell your channel is. And I'm like, join the club, join the club. Me either. We're all trying to figure it out together. Let's figure it out together. All right. <clears throat> How do I get subscribers to watch my new videos? They don't have a chance to see them on the homepage or are they just skipping them? What is a healthy subscriber to view video rate? Thank you. Okay. So first of all, <laughs> we're gonna get our sassy pants on here again. <laughs> like, just because someone subscribes to your channel, why do you think they're gonna watch your videos? or slash, why do you think they're gonna get notified of your channel videos? Um, let's be real. First of all, YouTube has come out and said that a lot of the time they're not gonna notify people who are subscribed to your channel of new videos. This could be multiple reasons, a magnitude of reasons, right? It could be that they haven't interacted with a lot of your videos recently. So recency and relevancy is something that kind of comes into play here. If they haven't opted into all the notifications, right? If they've already received more than three notifications in the past, you know, 24 hours or something like that, it could be something. Um, there are tons of reasons, right? So if you go back and look at your channel list right now that you are subscribed to, most likely, and most people might be subscribed to like more than 50 channels. Are you receiving 50 notifications a day of new uploads? No, you're not. So YouTube has come out first of all and said that they select a small amount of people to actually be notified. And if those people react well, then they might be willing to send out more notifications, right? So also, if you're relying so heavily on YouTube to notify your viewers of new videos, like you're just asking for trouble. Like, I don't know why you think that that is the best solution. They're the people who think like, oh, my video is being suppressed by YouTube. No one's watching it because you, why is YouTube responsible for finding viewers for your video? It's not. YouTube is responsible for finding videos that viewers wanna watch. It may or may not include your video. Hopefully that makes sense, right? YouTube is the maitre d' taking orders. Oh, you're looking for puppies? Oh, you're looking for military homecomings? Oh, you're looking for high school dance um, drill team competition videos, right? They're going into the back of the kitchen being like, I need a dance drill team video championship. Make sure it's a good one, right? And how do they know it's a good one? They're looking for retention. They're looking for recency. They're looking for high engagement, lots of comments, um, a high like subscribe ratio, whatever it is, or, right? They're looking for that. They're like, oh, Susie. At the perfect video for you and they serve it up, right? What they're not doing is, hey, Chef Katie, what are you making today? Oh, spaghetti bolognese. Okay, let me go out into the front of the restaurant and ask if anyone out there wants some spaghetti bolognese today. That's not how it works. That's how you want it to work. But you think about this too, that there are way more viewers than there are creators. They don't need to satisfy the creators that well, even though they try a lot harder than a lot of other platforms and they reward us a lot more and they pay us a lot more. Don't get that confused with who the audience really is. The audience is the viewer. The viewer needs to stay on as long as possible and the viewer needs to be served as many ads as possible that they can stand without jumping off the platform. You are part of the cog that supplies content but they are not going out there saying, Luis just made a video about Sony cameras. We gotta let everyone know. That's not how it's working. It's, it's working in the reverse. It's all of these people are asking for Sony camera videos. Who has a really good one right now? Let me look through my Filofax, Rolodex, library card catalog. That's how old I am. 
Oh, here's a good one. It's performing pretty well and it was released in the last three months. Great. Here you go, viewer. Let me know how, what you think about this one. And if you like it, I'll serve you another one. Okay. It's not that they're out there just being like, Luis, where's the next one, buddy? Where's the next one? That's not how it works. So stop and get your head out of your ass thinking that YouTube is out there or against you by not letting your current subscribers know. And I would say, Susie, what are you doing to let your current subscribers know that your video is out? Did you make a community post? Did you put it on Instagram story? Did you put it out as a YouTube story? Did you make a Facebook post about it? Did you call, like, call all of your friends and family? Did you release it to your Patreon? Did you put it out on your email list? If you're not bringing more people to the party, don't get mad that YouTube isn't finding enough people to join your party. That's not how it works. Sorry, the hoops are out. What can I say? Hoops are out, gloves are off. Maybe that is a shirt right there, right? Hoops are out, gloves are off. Hoops out, gloves off. By the way, if anyone is here watching, where's my sign, where's my sign, where's my sign? It's over here. All the music over here is coming from Creator Mix. If you're looking for free music for your YouTube live streams or you know social media, check them out, creatormix.com. If you want a link to my particular playlist, happy to send it. What do we got? <clears throat> You're gonna steal my hoops t-shirt? No! I'm gonna get Sylvia on Messenger today and be like, Sylvia, need a shirt before Sanov steals it. Hoops out, gloves off. Hello, Annie. I wish it did work like that, <laughs> right? Hello, video for bosses, good to see you. It makes sense, mind blown. Yay, right? A lot of people wanna bitch and moan about the way that they think that YouTube works. It's not that hard at the end of the day, right? We make it hard. If you're getting impressions on YouTube and it is being shown and people aren't clicking, that's very, that's very possible, right? So if you're seeing some impressions and people don't click on it and you have a very low click through rate, why the hell would YouTube be like, you know what we should do? Show this to more people. No, <laughs> again, nope. But you know what YouTube would do if they show it to 100 people and 50 people clicked on it and like, what the hell is this? Um, they're going to show it to 1000 people and then be like, hey, can we get it to 20%? Because a lot of people also will miscorrelate and be like, hey, I have a 15% click through rate, but YouTube is suppressing my video and I'd be like, hey, fucker, that's half of the equation. What's the impression count? And they're like, well, it's been shown to five people. And I'm like, uh -huh, is one of them you? And then you clicked on it to make sure that you Blame the hoops. Blame it on the hoops. Um, that um, if you have a super high click through rate, but your impressions are super duper low, okay? That's not necessarily an indicator that you're gonna have like a banger too, right? You have to actually be able to even that out against however many impressions that you have. And until you get to like over a thousand impressions or 500 impressions minimum, it's not like a true gauge. Get over yourself. If you have less than 100 impressions, like, I should really do that shirt. <laughs> well, you said you were gonna steal it, so whatever. <laughs> yeah. Hoops out, gloves off. Yeah. So a lot of people also, yeah, forget. They, they think click-through rate is the most important thing. And then they're also surprised, you know, if you look at the documentation that even YouTube has put out, you know, they'll say that pretty much if you can get to double digits, you're doing pretty well with um, with click through rate. So all these people are like, I have a 20% click through rate. And I'm like, um, do you, um, you know, marry it with the impressions and then tell me. So again, average is going to be somewhere between like two and 10%. So if you can get above 10% then and have good impression, then you're going to do fairly well. Also, some of the bigger um, videos out there could have a literal 2% or a 1% click-through rate and still be getting millions upon millions of views because they're getting millions upon millions of impressions. And so it's really, really important to know it's just one metric, okay? It's just one. 
you had a video with 20 views suddenly blow up after a year. Yep, 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 yep. So if you, you could have a lot to do with seasonality. You can have a lot to do with um, trending topic. So let's say you happen to have made a video about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard in 2016 as they were going through this whole thing about why Johnny showed up with bandages all over his hands at the Pirates of the Caribbean type of filming because his finger got cut off, right? Because of this bottle. Now there could be a renewed interest in it in 2022 because people are looking for information about what happened during that time frame and when it was fresh. So you may see a resurgence in it because of relevancy into recent events. That could be something. You could also have something where the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl, let's say three years ago, and people could be interested in videos about the last time they were in the Super Bowl and what year that was. So you could see a resurgence on a video on a channel that could have been from a long time ago because of recency and relevancy on something newer, right? You could also have something that would be like best Halloween costumes for women and or teenagers or whatever. And you could have, um, you may have released that in September cause, or at the very beginning of October because you wanna have people have long enough to be able to shop for the item, have it be shipped and have it in time for the event, right? That's why you start to see Valentine's at the beginning or the end of January or whatnot, because you want people to have enough time to do said thing. And then by the time that that search thing is really starting to be looked up, boom, here's your video and has lots of views already, right? Which is that velocity that you're looking for. So if you have something like best Halloween costumes for women, well, Halloween usually happens once a year. So Technically, even though it's a relevant event that happened in, let's say, 2021, this October or September, when it's going to be happening again, um, people are still going to be looking for best Halloween costumes for women. And so you may see a resurgence and dip and, um, you know, valley, whatever, every September slash October when your video pops up as best Halloween costumes for women. So because more people will be searching for it then because it's going to be a an event based type of timing, it's very, very possible and probable that you're gonna have big peaks and valleys like that. Um, that could be cyclical, you know, anything right now that's going on about the NFL draft, what happens, what the process is, anything like that could also see a resurgence right now at, you know, towards the end of April when it happens every year. So keep that in mind, right? And also there are some videos that aren't just indicators of success right off the bat. I think one of my most successful videos, 300 and something thousand views, it just did okay for the first couple weeks, later got found in search, got picked up and then kind of shut up like that. So, and also stuff with like YouTube shorts, it's very, very common that it, it used to take 24 to 48 hours for, of it being in circulation before it might get potentially picked up in the shorts shelf, see a big spike in views, and then you knew exactly when it dropped out of that shelf because um, your view thing would just completely tank. Right? That makes sense? If that makes sense, give me a thumbs up on this video and in the chat. I want both. I want them both. This is audience participation. I wanna make sure you're still awake out there. I'm here, I have coffee. <laughs> Oh, I forgot you guys are really delayed. I was like, there's not a single thumbs up that I'm getting. Not one. <laughs> there's one. Yeah, there's one. What is a good affordable camera to start off with for YouTube? And what is the most efficient way to organically grow on YouTube? All right. Um, honestly, sometimes I think, um, one of the best cameras is just your cell phone. A few things I've been actually wanting to make this video and I've been waiting to get my camera back to show you. This, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go get the link for it and show you guys. This is actually kind of cool. Give me one second. Let me give you guys some music.
All right, this link that I just put in the chat is an affiliate link, but I just wanna show you it. Um, it's this that I'm talking about. This is the Nicey rig. What is the title on this? It's vlog selfie mirror camera slash phone, TikTok live stream, 180 degree. What an awful title. They're really stuffing it, keyword stuffing it, isn't it? Um, 180 degree tilt cold shoe mount flip mirror applicable for iPhone 13 slash 12 slash 11 slash XS Pro Max rig, comma Sony comma Panasonic comma Nikon dash 377. Okay, let's let's just chat about this for a second. Um, here we go. By the way, this is the Ulanzi ST02. It's one of my favorites. So this. Originally, I picked up because I have the Sony a7 III, uh, which does not have a flip out, what do you call it, viewfinder thing, right? It only kind of does that tilt up and backwards thing. So it's good if you're standing behind it, but not if you wanna um, have it on the side and see if you're in frame or have it flip up or anything like that, right? So this little guy you get because it goes into the cold shoe mount, pretend this is the top of your camera. You slide this in here, slide this down. And then you're able to angle it so that it's just a mirror that it reflects. So if you're standing behind it, you're able to see the reflection of like the view or um, something like that. This also works really well if you are shooting. Oh. if you're shooting videos with your cell phone, right? I think most people know this, but let's just have a quick chat about it, okay? Most people try to use the selfie camera, right? You wanna use this one up here because you can see yourself in frame here. The problem with that is you don't sometimes get the cool things like portrait, you don't get like macro, you don't get a lot of the, um, the highest quality because also like the, the F stop and, and whatnot is, is higher or worse on this one than it is on the back camera. I think most people know that the back camera has a higher quality video than the front camera. We are also going to, I am going to be doing a, how to shoot better videos or how to make videos for YouTube using your phone. But I, I've just been, I've been a little hesitant because I don't necessarily want to just jump into some sort of tutorial about making videos. I think you guys can realize my trepidation with that because then it becomes, when you do with the edited footage and how are you gonna edit it? Because it would be the natural progression, right? And I kind of wanna tread lightly because it's been months now of not talking about how to edit videos. And this is how to shoot videos, which is like tiptoeing into those waters, right? So one thing is if you are Hello, buddy. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make an appearance? We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. So if you are about to shoot a video, um, oh, this is backwards. Let's just pretend it's the correct way though. Um, you could, a couple of options. You could, if you have, good shake, buddy. If you have an Apple Watch, I saw this tip. It was great from Think Media. You can throw on your little Apple Watch facing you with the little um, thing so that you can see that you're in frame and use it like a little bit of a monitor. You could additionally also use this type of guy to be able to go down, see the screen, make sure that you're in frame and you can see in the reflection that, um, hopefully you, you guys could see it. You could see in the reflection if it's recording or not. So I think that's actually kind of nice because if you're staring at the, what is this? It's like a polka. Oh, I think it, it went to, maybe that was the end of my playlist and it started some new play. I'm like, what is this? I do not like that. Oh my gosh, if I got copyright stricken because of that polka music, because of my playlist being over, I will have a conniption. Not a conniption, I don't care that much. It was 41 songs, it's one hour and 50 minutes, and have I been streaming for one hour and 45 minutes? Oh, there you go. Let's just start over. How irritating. 
Okay, there we go. Um, that's so funny. That's so funny. Okay, so if you are sitting here, right, and you're filming your video, but all you see are the little stovetop rings, then, oops, this would be backwards. Then you'd wanna make sure that you're still in focus and in frame, and this is a great way to do that. So hopefully then you would see. So you'd be staring at these little guys also, before you start filming, just a couple of tips. Make sure you wipe it off with a lens because sometimes fingerprints and smudges, but also I like to do the like point test because a lot of the times you're like, I don't know which lens to be looking at. It's usually, I think it's like this, this left one or this, it's one of these, right? Because each one of them, one's the wide angle, one is the like the telephoto and one is like your standard. So make sure you point at the lens, know which one is actually the one that is recording you and then focus in as best as you can on staring into the soul of that one. Because a lot of the time there is nothing worse than watching a YouTube video uh, that looks kind of like this. Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming to my YouTube channel. And um, today we're gonna be learning lots of cool stuff. I'm super excited that you're here, right? Like nobody wants that, nobody wants that. So know which lens you're actually looking at. Very, very important. I know the polka music is like a riot, right? Anyways, that is just some, some of the tips, but that is this little mirror here. So you can use it if you are vlogging out in the field, you can use it if you have, like I have the Sony a7 III or some other camera that maybe doesn't not only have a flip out lens, but there are some cameras that have no lens that articulates at all, right? So stick this behind, throw the little mirror down at the angle, you'll be able to see it. This is like a $20 solution, which is much better than upgrading to a camera that's $3,500 to be able to have the flip out screen. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, this little guy, it's a good accessory and it articulates so you can kind of like move it around and stuff. So, and it's really easy to throw into a camera bag or something. So it's really easy to like pack flat. Not that you guys asked, there you go. Okay. I've been making videos for one and a half years and I still have not reached 1000 subscribers. What is wrong? What do I need to do to improve? Okay, there could be a lot of things there. So technically you may have been on YouTube for a year and a half. How consistently are you making videos? How good are those videos? What's the retention of those videos? What's the impressions of those videos? What's the click through rate of those videos? Um, is the fact that even if you have, let's say, 52 videos out there, let's say 50 videos. Are they on similarly related topics? Are they like my day at the zoo? And then it was like what I ate for breakfast. And then it was here I am in Hawaii. And then it was like, here's how to change the oil in your car. Like if they're unrelated topics, um, maybe that could be a problem. Maybe if it was a, a slurry of like, 30 videos in 30 days and then nothing for six months, maybe that's a problem. Maybe, you know, there's so many variables and what ifs that I can't even be able to come up with like a really great reason. <laughs> there could be many, many reasons why it's not working out for you, but it's just one of those like, we need more input. We don't know. Yeah. It is neat, right? This is such a cool little gadget. The little mirror, it's such a good one. So, and you can see like, folds up pretty flat. Like if you just like toss that in your camera bag. Yeah, speaking of camera bags. It's over there. I finally got my Peter McKinnon Nomadic Everyday Backpack one. Although some of the items are missing, which apparently they're going to be addressing and fixing. Overall, it was kind of a disappointing experience when it came to ordering the product and having it be delayed for, you know, over a year, but alas, that's how it goes sometimes. And uh, I am glad that I have it now in time for, hopefully I will be, Luis, I'll see you at people, uh, PodFest, VidFest, right? I'll see you down there. Are you speaking as well about the Amazon? I can't remember if you're also in that group. but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna see you down there at PodFest, VidFest, right? Because aren't you from there? 
from that area. Maybe I'm wrong. Hey, Dr. Elo in the house. Great to see you. Kudos, everyone give Dr. Elo a round of applause. He not only was learning things, but applying things and then made a video in response to said things. And you said you released it this morning at like 9 a.m. Eastern, right? So I probably should go over and take a look. It's like, I think it's like, what do you do when a brand asks you to do stuff that's unethical or um, slash again, terms of service, correct? So I'm gonna have to go watch that. Yeah, PodFest. And in fact, I believe Annie is gonna be coming to PodFest because she lives in Orlando and it is in Orlando, not in Tampa. Like I mistakenly and erroneously said during my live stream. And I think I messaged, I was like, shows you how much I pay attention. Um, there you go. Uh, what, what, what? Oh, you're going to people a video, but you're not going to, okay. Okay, yeah. I remember you drove to people a video, right? You and your, your son. Shelly, is the link in the description for what? Is the link in the description for what, Annie? Oh, it's the delay. Um, WEPA. What's WEPA? Question, how do live streams affect channel negatively? Should I have a separate channel for a live stream? <sighs> Annie, you're overthinking. Just put out fucking videos. Just publish some freaking videos. Versatile Latin American Spanish slang exclamation used to express excitement. Congratulations. Enjoy. Awesome. Okay. You put out a video four days ago, but then before then you didn't put, it was like what, a month ago and it was a short. And then the other one was February. So Annie, you're focused on the wrong things. Just publish some freaking videos. And I think the last time you heard you're crying about not having like 50 subscribers. Now you have 75 or like 73 subscribers. So you're doing fine. You're not putting out enough content. The bigger the hoop, the bigger the attitude. Actually, these are huge hoops for me. Like I would never wear bigger than this. It's like almost touching my shoulder. The biggest thing for you, Annie, I, I just don't know how to like get this through to you. You know, I say this with love as much as. Hi, buddy. You want to say hi to the people? Oh, that's a big jump. That's a big jump for a puppy. Um, you just need to make more videos. Put out more videos. Stop with the questions. You know what I mean? Um, stop with the doubt. Stop with the, like, just overthinking. You'll know what to do when you have data. You'll have data when you publish videos. Put out some videos. Put out videos, because how many videos do you have now? And I've been talking to you for two years. Two years we've been talking about videos. One month ago, two months ago, three months ago, five months ago, seven months ago, eight months ago, 11 months, 11 months, one year. Okay, so literally you've been on YouTube a year. Four, six, eight, ten. Ten videos in a year. Oops, sorry, buddy. One, two, three, four of them are shorts, okay? So you have ten videos in... Hi, buddy. In 12 months, four of them are shorts or something like that. If you were putting out one video a week, you would have 52. You're telling me you can't put out a video. I, she says that she doesn't put out a video a week. Do as I say, not as I do, people. Right? Yeah. Right. Put out more fucking videos. You wanna have YouTube success? You wanna have people calling you, ringing your phone? You wanna do the things, all the things? Put out more videos. Stop worrying about uh, all the, hi buddy. Just put out more, hi. Why is your butt wet? What? Why is your butt wet?
I have questions. I have questions. Okay. How do I grow on YouTube is always <clears throat> put out more videos or more videos that your people want to see. Why, why is your butt wet? Can we just talk about it for a second? I have a lot of questions, buddy. Okay. You want to hang with me? Okay. Um, Do you think that having a set time and day is important or randomly uploading is good? It depends. It could be either way. If you have an audience um, that maybe does a live stream, such as Sad Song Sundays, and you know that you go live every Sunday, hopefully that's something that people can set their schedules to, right? If you do not want to be burdened by having to have a deadline, um, because it causes you anxiety and stress, then it could be a reason to encourage people to make sure they're subscribed, have the bell on, be on your email list, get notified, get sent text messages, whatever else it is, right? But for some people, they actually get nervous um, by having to meet a set deadline and they stress themselves out and they end up just putting out crap con content because they wanna hit a quota. Some people though, hi, you're so handsome. Some people know that they will not put out content unless they have a deadline, unless they have a drop dead date. So for some, it's gotta be like, I have to publish a video every Thursday. So it doesn't have to be the best video, but it does have to be finished. It doesn't have to be published, right? Because for some perfectionist, they may have the tasks such as put out a video there isn't a stopping time for them because they're so obsessed with trying to make every detail perfect that so much time will pass that the deadline, if they don't have one, will also pass. So sometimes it's a save mechanism for them to be like, you have to put out the video on Tuesday or um, not on a specific date, but like you only have so much time to work on said project because a project will take as many hours as you allot it. Right. So you also know like, hey, if you only have 10 hours and you're at hour nine, you're like, wow, I'm going to have to start making some ruthless cuts and decisions here because this thing has to be ready to go in an hour. Right. Did you bonk your head? So that may be something for people to look at is, is the schedule keeping doing more harm than good? And then there are some people who are like, if you're going to have a schedule, then you need to keep to your schedule. So if you're going to be someone who has it in your banner, new videos every Tuesday, and then I look and your video last published date was five months ago. And I'm like, well, this girl's a liar. Um, and I don't want to subscribe to her. You know what I'm saying? So it always kind of comes down to like, it depends. It, dep it depends. It just depends. Um, but for some people, they really stress themselves out about having to meet a particular deadline. And here's the thing is, you know, quantity and quality, we've had this conversation a lot about how sometimes also quality is subjective, but quality is usually not reached without quantity. And you saw that parable about, you know, the clay pots and everything where at the end, the people who only focused on the quality and not quantity just had these piles of clay and theories about what they thought would make great pottery. And it wasn't true. Right. And the people who just tried things, got some bumps and bruises, had to, um, you know, get burned by the kiln or whatever a few times, um, their stuff was always better. And so yeah, it's a balance. It's a balance, man balance get to work exactly just get to work put in more work and you just don't know when it comes to putting out quantity there are videos in everyone's arsenal where you thought 
that one wasn't that great, but it popped off and I don't know why. And then there are ones you put your heart and soul in and you're like, five people watch this and that was it. This was my best video. This was my quality, right? And it's, it's tough pill sometimes to swallow that your level of quality is not indicative of the level of value or entertainment or education that comes from the viewer's point of view. So I think we talked about this before I had that video shot on my iPad at 720p as the highest resolution, fixing and repairing the bottom of the Louboutin shoes in red paint, three minute video, do way better than some of my other videos that were much, much harder to put together and film, right? So it's not me assigning quality to it. It was the audience who actually then decided the quality of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> That is me shaking my head, perfectionism plus I've been sick. Yeah, it can be hard. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And Dr. Elo says, I have put out 225 pieces of content between lives, shorts, videos, and pictures into five platforms this month. Thought you were gonna say this year, holy moly. I cranked it up for real this month and I still don't give a crap about the numbers, but I am happy. Yeah, I think one thing is if you can detach yourself from the result of the effort and content that you're putting out, buddy, I think your hair is on my face again. Um, then you're not disappointed, but you can be pleasantly surprised by the outcome. Again, let me say that if you disassociate and detach your personal feelings apart from the results of your content, you can find yourself pleasantly surprised by the outcomes. If you are banking on the fact that each one of them is going to be viral and you're disappointed when it is not, then it's 225 pieces of content into a shame spiral. Does that make sense? What you do wanna do is focus on the fact that you created 225 pieces of content, each one being 1% better than the last one that went out, you know, or looking back at the fact that you were able to across five platforms repurpose, and you're building and honing your skills when it comes to that. That is all valuable information and pieces of things to stick in your brain, hi buddy, um, versus being disappointed that however many of them didn't land as viral. So again, if you can detach yourself from the result of it and you focus on what happened, which was, I created 225 pieces of content, then you can be pleasantly surprised from the outcome. Hopefully that makes sense. If that makes sense to the five of you that are still here, give me a thumbs up on this video and in the chat. <laughs> and if any of my channel members are here, or if you aren't, but you have access to your emoji keyboard, can I get some puppy faces for Cooper? Can I have some puppy faces in the chat for Cooper? You're so handsome. Oh, he's so mad at me. You don't like being held, but I'm making you stay here. Still have questions about the wet fur. Still have questions about the wet fur. So there's that. <laughs> Aren't you so handsome? Aren't you so handsome? Look at him. Look at him. Yeah. So Brother Bruce says, that's what I'm doing. I'm not looking or understanding all of the data. I'm just having fun creating videos. It's more of a hobby than a job. Exactly. Yeah, there's some puppies. There's some puppies. Look, buddy. Look, buddy. There's some puppies just for you. There's some puppies. Aww. They love you. Not as much as I love you, but they love you. So Dr. Elo says, F being viral. FB, I'm up. I'm sick of all these people trying to tell me how to live. <laughs> Sorry, for my, um, yeah, being happy and being fulfilled is worth a lot more. Absolutely, but also, the more pieces of content you put out, the more chances you have of being viral as well, right? So if you're Annie over there with what was it, ten pieces of content, you have 10 chances of being viral. Whereas Dr. Elo has 225 chances of being viral. Just saying, just saying. What is that? Is that a, is that a duck? What is that? Oh, it's a dog? 
Oh wait, we have a new channel member. Oh, shut up, brother Bruce. Okay, wait, I have a I have a thing for a new channel member. Wait, buddy, I just I just gotta hit the button. Do you wanna help me hit the button? Protect your ears. Here we go. Thank you so much for becoming a channel member. Appreciate you, and um, hope you hope you like the the coop dance. The Cooper dance is your chance to be a member. Hit the button. Hit 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 the button. Hit 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 the button. Cooper dances when you hit the butt. Oh, he hates me so much right now. <laughs> Um, you have more emojis on YouTube than you do emotes on Twitch. I do? Wait, what? I don't know. I thought I married them. And in fact, oh, you know what I did do? I put all of my emotes on Discord. So I think it's because I don't necessarily know how to do it on Twitch. But like all of the little ones, that, yeah, you see like the little puppies and the things that were on screen. I also put them in our Discord and yeah, I remember I uploaded all of the ones that I have, I think into the discord, but you're right. I don't think I put them on Twitch, but I thought that you had the option of seeing them or maybe it's just Twitch people can see them on discord. I don't know. I'm not super well-versed in that, but um, I, could, I could look at that. I could look at that if you want them, right? So uh, let me figure that out. <laughs> Cooper is a cute <gasps> buddy. They're appreciating you. Oh, it's a Cooper appreciation party reservation, everybody. Cooper appreciation post. You're the you're the man of the hour. All right. Should you do another dance? <laughs> you wanna do another dance? Oh, you don't. But you're gonna. Ready? Oh. Okay. Wait. Wait. Bye. No one call animal cruelty on me. He can jump down anytime he wants to. He's fine. Cooper, blink twice if you're fine. Yeah, he blinked. He's fine, y'all. He's fine. He's fine. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Some of the emojis, right? The little megaphone, the little, um, the little thingy there. By the way, I believe that the more channel members that we get, the more emoji things I can upload. I remember when I had... Um, so I had channel members, you know, a while ago. And then when I originally got the job at like TubeBuddy and I was like, I don't even know like what I'm gonna be able to make videos about or what I'm gonna be able to talk about. And I don't want you to like be paying for something that you may not be getting what you originally signed up for. So I turned off channel memberships for a while. And I remember though, I had more channel uh, members before. Um, and so I was able to upload more emojis. So this time though, as we get more members again, then some of the ones will come back because I think I had to like pick and choose which ones I could have. So like right now we may or may not have, you guys can tell me which ones are there. Like we may not have the coffee cup or we may not have the Eiffel or the, the space needle or something. There's a few that didn't make it yet um, because they were part when I had access to more. So <gasps> we have a super chat buddy. They want to see you dance. They want to see you dance. Okay, we're not going to do the super chat one. We're going to actually do the the music music one. Okay, let's find a song, buddy. Let's find a song. And then let's do a Cooper dance. This is a Cooper appreciation stream now. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, better move along. Okay.
He hated that. And I loved every second of it. And um, I may have to screen capture that for later. <clears throat> Cooper, you are amazeballs. Your hair is all over my face now, buddy. Um, now that there's like three people left. <laughs> Cooper, I enjoyed every second of that, especially at the end when you were rolling it. So cute. Oh, my gosh. Can we get some love for Cooper? Is he not the cutest? Oh, my gosh. Look at him. He's like, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Oh, hey. We got a super chat, buddy. I think it was because of your dancing. I think it was your dancing. Don't worry. I promise I will spend the money on the colored treats. I can't say the word grannies without him knowing. The colored treats for you and your sister. But should we do a little dancey dance? We got to do a dancey dance here. Oh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, one second. Oh, that was a super chat one. We need a good one. We need a good one. Ooh, how about appropriate? Tell it straight. This is tell it straight, which is what we do here. so impressed with your dancing this is so impressive oh my goodness wow wow okay everybody is he not the best i'm surprised that his sister isn't over here like just running in to like jealousy rages um i can't not believe that some of y'all are still rocking with me in this ridiculousness that is <laughs> but um this is not a members only live stream. This is a everyone live stream. We're going to do a members only on Tuesday. Tuesday we'll have a members only live stream, which will be members will be the only ones able to chat, but it will be public viewable. Oh, buddy. And then I wonder why I feel like I have Cooper hairs on my face. It's probably because of the Cooper on my face. So, but thankfully a lot of the people <laughs> that are here are members because y'all, are just very nice but um whew, goodness um whew, man i still i can still feel it i need like a random makeup brush over here that i can actually wipe the <laughs> wipe the cooper hairs off okay <clears throat> how to improve watch hours and okay so to hit monetize i know it feels weird to go back into um like youtube -y stuff now so let's ease our way in gently okay oh man i still cooper i know you take it out on me you got the wrath okay we got the music back on um oh man <laughs> i paid for it i paid for it y'all raising watch hours for those who are trying to get monetized, right? You do need to have 1,000 subscribers. You do need to have 4,000 uh, hours of watch time in the last 365 days, right? So if you had a viral video um, 375 days ago, those watch hours will not be accumulated towards your 4,000 hours of watch time, but they would attribute to your channel's overall lifetime hours. So some people will um, make comments about how their hours when they're seeing the little speedometer odometer thing for reaching the 4000 hours, the number is fluctuating. And that's because if you've been uploading for a while, and it's been longer than 365 days, then those hours will drop off. Also keep in mind that if you do have something like a live stream, I'm sorry, did you want to be closer to the mic? If you have something like a live stream, and then 
you have gained watch hours from that, which typically happens because uh, live streams tend to have longer view duration per person than regular video on demand, but you typically will get less views. Um, so there's that. But if you private your live stream or unlisted, then you lose the hours that you're gaining from having the live stream, right? So live streaming can be a way to try and get you to 4,000 hours because of the typical five times longer stay durations that people have. But it's going to be all for naught if you end up then privating. Oh my gosh, you guys. If you end up privating those videos. No. Um... Um, I, I don't know if you happen to be on a phone versus desktop. I think with YouTube memberships, the only way you join is through desktop. It's not available on the phone or like tablet version. Oh, the other one, speak her name and here she comes. Now, um, a few other things. Watch time gained from shorts while they're inside of the shorts shelf will not count towards your monetization, but the 1000 subscribers, if you gained them from there, they would count. Okay. Also, you can't get watch hours from things like ads, um, things, unlisted videos. Um, so there's several conditions that you would have to have. Additionally, you can't have any like community guideline strikes. You need to have two factor authentication turned on. So those are a couple of the new added bullet points that you must um, check off before you're getting monetized and hooking up your AdSense account, right? Now, um, now there's also a whole bunch of do's and don'ts when it comes to AdSense, such as like you shouldn't open new AdSense accounts for each YouTube channel. You should be hooking them to the same AdSense because you're only supposed to have one per social security or EIN or, um, you know, um, business identity. And then you should, all your channel should roll up into that. So multiple AdSense accounts is a no, no. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of do's and don'ts when it comes to AdSense, including things like, um, encouraging viewers to watch your ads, play them through, click on your ads, clicking on your own ads. You can have your channel or your AdSense account terminated from doing those things, which are a violation of terms of service. Okay. Now, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is the, I have it. I know I have it. Maybe I, where'd I put it? Pictures, YouTube. Where is it? A few other things. Um, you have to verify your pay name, your address. They'll usually ask you to upload some sort of government ID then, or sometimes they'll ask you to do a verification of pin number, which they will mail to a mailing address. And so that's why you see a lot of people with the little, um, you know, I got monetized on YouTube with the AdSense little logo thing. Cause it's the pin number that you have to put in. And, um, but you're not supposed to have multiple AdSense accounts. You're not supposed to click on your own ads. You're not supposed to do anything to artificially inflate your impressions or clicks artificially. And you're not supposed to ask others to watch and click on your ads. And you don't want to use, um, what they call deceptive implementation methods to obtain clicks or views. So all of that being said, um, some ways to improve your watch time is going to be make videos that people want to watch, um, making sure that your average view durations are getting longer and longer because, um, it depends if you have 30% duration on a 20 minute video or you have 50 minute, um, or 70% duration on a 10 minute video, like which one's better. It's probably the 70% duration because it's seven minutes versus technically six minutes on a 20 minute video. But the average view duration is an indicator to YouTube that people are enjoying your videos. So the likelihood of them pushing it out to more people would be higher on the 70% retention than a 30% retention. Granted, other factors are around the same, whether it's impressions, click through rate and so on and so forth. Now, things that you can also do besides um, doing live streams, making sure that you're getting videos with high view duration is creating playlists and um, sending people through playlists, which would then automatically play your next video, um, as opposed to them being suggested videos from other channels and other people. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, Bruce says I joined on my mobile. 
Oh, okay. Okay. It's not on Apple for some reason. I don't know. I'm curious. Let me go to a channel. Let me see. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Let me go to a channel that I know has the join. Hi. I know I'm subscribed. Okay, now let me go to it on Android. I don't know if that'll mess up anything while I'm listening to music. Okay, maybe I just won't. Anyways, I don't know. It's okay, we'll figure it out. So um, hopefully that would help. Um, Playlists, playlists can, can definitely help. So there's that. Um, also consistently publishing, that could be something, and live streaming. Oh man, y'all, I still feel it, I still feel it. How often should I post and are my videos too long? I don't know, depends. <laughs> you guys know it's my favorite. It depends. Um, how often I should post as I guess often as you can while still feeling sane, feeling fulfilled as a creator and not feeling burnt out is my answer. Um, are your videos too long? I don't know. If you have 10% retention, maybe. Um, maybe. How do you use an external mic with an iPad? Uh, depending on some of them will have uh, cables or stuff that you can like plug right into the bottom of them. Um, you can sometimes use like a little external dock or whatnot and plug in through there. Um, you can also use Bluetooth. Uh, so you could do any of those as well. You're on an iPhone. Yeah, YouTube should fix it. I don't know. How do I get viral and get subs? You make more videos. And then hope for, um, and I'm, I'm maybe even talking about um, why going viral a lot of the time, it's kind of like winning the lottery, right? it, literally like winning the lottery. Some people are able to capitalize on it and do well, and some people don't do well with it. Um, they usually just find themselves in the same situation a year later, but bemoaning the fact that YouTube like hates them or something. So um, you have one viral video. If you don't have anything to follow it up with, if you don't capitalize on it and keep doing um, more of what makes you popular, you could um, waste the potential and opportunity. But and truthfully, I would rather not go viral and have a whole library of content that people can come back to with slow and steady growth versus having one video, especially like I had one video that did really well on a topic that I don't really talk about often, like shoe and fashion, right? People thought I was a, sh like a fashion channel, I'm not a fashion channel. <laughs> Obvi, you guys saw my sweatpants earlier. Um, obviously not a fashion channel. So having virality in a topic that you have no no intention of following up on that's that's not good for anybody <laughs> i mean maybe if you had an affiliate link but also if you can't capitalize on the fact that wow it's really starting to come out down there if you can't capitalize on the fact that you want to get them onto an email list that you want to sell them the paint that you're using in the in the video to repair the shoes if you're not selling the shoes themselves um, then it's really going to be a wasted opportunity to have all these impressions and views and then not gain anything from it, if if you know what I mean. So, um, just make sure here. If you're not ready to capitalize on virality for most people and they're not, then um, it, it can be one of the worst things that happens to your channel. Just like you've had some people say like creator on the rise was one of the best and worst things that ever happened to their channel because they got more impressions from people, but they didn't give a shit about them. And so um, it tanked their channel and analytics, just like technically you could say I went viral for a giveaway video. Hi. Um, but it was the wrong audience, an audience that didn't stay and it didn't actually benefit me in the end. Oh no, did you hit the microphone? 
Did you hate it? Did you have something to say to the people about fashion? He says, I don't know if anybody has seen it, but I have this collar, which you can't see right now because my hair is too long because my mommy hasn't taken me to get a haircut in a while. I don't know if you can see it, but it actually says Cooper in little <laughs> Julie's. I got this off of um, Amazon and you can, you know, spell out the name that you want and stuff. I thought it was pretty cute. <laughs> so did I make an Amazon influencer video about that? Oh yeah, there was a question about Amazon influencer video, right? We should talk about that. How do I get, oh my gosh, buddy, you have so much hair. Okay. I should start a fashionless channel. Oh no. Um, off, uh, like D does dark mode video. <laughs> Apple has one thing, Android has other and vice versa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Amazon influencer video. I thought if you haven't seen the conversation that I had, I'm gonna set you down, buddy. If you haven't seen the video that I did as an interview with uh, Dane Courier, I would encourage you to also take a peek at that. Oh my gosh, I just saw the delay now on the video. Poor little Cooper, y'all just saw his little peen. Um, so, will you give them their colored treats and let them have... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you guys see that? You guys, everyone saw his little, his little private junk. Oops, <laughs> it's an only pause over here trying to help mommy pay for gas money. Goodbye, um, shaking his bits. So, <laughs> where are we with Amazon influencer video? Yeah, start with the um, the video interview that I did with Dan. But basically, if you are an Amazon influencer, raise your hand on the chat. Amazon influencers, that first level that you need to be before you can apply, I'm sorry, Amazon associate is the one that you need to be at and apply before you can become an Amazon influencer. So they are two different programs, okay? The associates is more of the affiliate links. The Amazon influencer one is also affiliate links, but in conjunction with that, there's going to be shoppable videos, shoppable photo posts and um, ideal lists and, and such so that you can um, have basically like a little storefront and have these videos that might appear on product pages of Amazon as you're shopping around for things. Only pause. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He's got to help me pay for gas, even though I don't drive much. So <clears throat> first level is you need to apply to Amazon associates with Amazon associates. You do need to usually make three sales within a 90 day period. Otherwise they can close down your associate account. So you want people to actually buy things from there. Next level after you are an associate too, you can also apply for the influencer program. They're gonna ask you to verify your social identity in different ways. It could be a YouTube channel, it could be a TikTok, it could be lots of um, other social media followings. I will say that when I tried to open my second account, because I think y'all know I had some problems with my first account, them cl closing it, not attributing sales to the right store ID, it was a mess. So the easiest thing for me to do is actually start the process all over and start a whole new account. And I used my TikTok account to be my social proof. And one thing they did not tell me is when you do that with TikTok, you actually have to put your store link in your profile as your clickable link um, for a duration of possibly weeks until they verify your identity or blah, 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 and then <laughs> and it's like this long, ugly URL. It's so horrible. And then if you click on it, it says like this page doesn't exist because like they'll give it to you, but it's not like official until it's actually official. <clears throat> so this broken link sitting on my TikTok for like three weeks or something just horrific. But once they um, then verify your identity, then you're granted access to the influencer program. Once inside the influencer program, there is another hoop to jump through which is after you're granted your storefront, you want to get involved in the little shoppable videos. And to do that, you have to be approved through the shoppable video on-site ad placements, which means first you create three shoppable videos and you upload them to your profile and then you submit them for verification, two levels of verification. One is going to be do they meet the guidelines? Is it demonstrative in its 
execution? Does it not mention competitive um, things or bad mouth the product? So on and so forth. And is it entertaining? Does it not have incorrect and factual information? Right? And so that's the first round of approval. So you have that and that's usually done in a few days. Then the second level, which is supposed to take just a few days, but because of, I don't know, whatever reason, it has been taking several weeks up to like a month to now be approved. You're waiting for the approval for on-site ad placement because if you don't get approved for that, the only place you'll see those videos is on your shoppable homepage that you make as a profile, which no one shops there. They only shop on the product page that they're going to maybe make a purchase on. So it's critical that you get approved for on-site placement and you have three chances to be approved. And when you get not approved, they don't tell you why. And they also will make you delete all of your videos and upload videos and then submit again. It could take another month to get approved. That happened to me twice. I only got approved on the third round on the second profile. The first one I got approved on the first round, but they wouldn't attribute my sales to the right store. So I had to put energy into the other one, right? So if you get a message saying that you have been approved for on-site ads, then it's go time. Then you go through the process of just keep making videos. And then it takes two, three days, uh, a day or two to get those videos, each one approved. And then after that, it takes a couple days sometimes to possibly become available into the carousel of videos that might show up on the product page of that video. Also, if you do live streams, once you get into the second tier, not the first tier, I don't wanna talk about live streaming too much um, with that, then if you have a product that you talk about during your live stream, because you have to add them pre and then say which one you're talking about, they can pick that up and also put that on the product page if you're talking about a specific product for a certain amount of time during a live stream. Now. <laughs> I don't have to tell you that a lot of people shop on Amazon. And the thing is, if they watch enough of your video, you will get credited for the sale and you make money. And it's not anything you have to do to drive people to that product page. They're already looking for it. So if you can get them over the precipice of deciding yes or no, then you get rewarded. So I think with Amazon associates, most of the time I get a message that says like, you have not made enough money. You have to make $10 to get a direct deposit. And they'll be like, you've not made enough money in this last month to get a payout. So um, keep trying and we'll just roll it over. You know, so like every three months I'll get $15, $12. Um, but with the Amazon influence program, and you guys can go back and see this, this is in my monthly revenue report. The first month that I was approved, as opposed to the $5 I make with Amazon Associates, I made $500 with influencers. And then in the next month, I doubled that, or more than doubled it, and I made $1,200 with Amazon influencers. And the month after that, I almost doubled it, and I got to $2,200 with Amazon influencers. So this month was slower, but I think I'll still um, break through $2,000. So, and like I said earlier in the stream when Tom was here, right? If I'm lucky, I make 50 to $200 in AdSense in any given month, but I made $2,200 last month with Amazon Influencer Program. So if I were smart, maybe I would just keep spending a lot of time on doing Amazon Influencer Video because it's paying a much faster dividend and payout than anything else that I'm doing right now. So that's just food for thought. If that's something that you wanna get into, then definitely start with the video interview that I did with um, Dan, but I think that's kind of the nuts and bolts of a lot of it. Like I said, once you have it, you got the Amazon shoppable video, which I prefer because it's more passive and you don't have to sit there and do a live stream or anything like that. Um, you can make basically what are like pretty Pinterest pin type things and put things in a shoppable post. Those are really easy to create. You could probably do those in PicMonkey, Canva, Photoshop, and um, you know, people can click on that, but I think it's lower the likelihood because people have to be on your page and click on it, or you would post that thing on Pinterest, or you would post that image on your Instagram and hope people will click, which is gonna be a lot less people, but it's pretty simple and you could just make a lot of them. The next is also like they have these idea lists, which is you can have a curated list of things such as like equipment I use to live stream, my best microphone setup um, recommendations, my favorite lighting, um, so you can have different lists like that or my arts and crafts business for cricket um, You have lots of different lists and then people can go get like a certain Group of stuff and you can kind of shop around and 
if they click on it because you were the one who led them there, then you might get some extra money from that. So hopefully that kind of explains it. <laughs> yeah, you made $5 on Amazon Associates. It's very common. Like I make no money on Amazon Associates. All of my money comes from influencer. So yeah, I make no money on Associates um, only from the influencer program. So if you can get into the influencer program, I would highly recommend that. All right, I'm gonna go because my husband told me it's time for lunch. And I've been streaming for a long ass time, like two and a half hours. Like, who am I, Dean Nimmin? Nick Nimmin? Anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. And um, thank you for hanging out with me. Some of you were warriors and did from top to bottom on this whole live stream. And um, thank you for loving my dog, Cooper, as much as I, well, not as much as I do, but thank you for loving on my dog. Appreciate you. Thanks for the new channel member as well, Brother Bruce, even though I kid you about your laundry, you know. Love and appreciate you so much. So if anyone else wants to join the channel memberships, make sure you do because we're going to have a channel member only live stream chat next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I'll put a community post in there um, to remind y'all and myself. And if you have questions, that's your time. That is your time to uh, make that be known to the group. All right. Also, you can follow along in the discord. There is a separate discord room for channel members. And there's also just lots of channels that you can join in on, including Amazon influencer, if you want to chat about that or live streaming or any other chit chat. So everyone's really nice over there. Come hang out with a dozen of us on discord. And I hope you all have a great one. And I will see you in a stream very, very soon. Bye y'all.